great show. Uh, you've had uh, my predecessor, Greg Cage, <laughs> here. So I'm excited <laughs> to be here, man. This is a blessing to be able to come down here and be with you. All fun, man. Yeah. So now, did you grow up in California? Yeah, I'm native. I'm a native of uh, California, uh, born and raised right there on 101st in Maine. Mm. Uh, Gompers, uh, went to Gompers. I'm really a seventh grade dropout. Uh, I kind of was a terrible kid. Uh, and uh, I learned my lesson. Uh, I was, actually, I did some time in juvenile hall, and uh, that's where I learned how to play my first, uh, how to play the piano. And that's what started me on my musical journey. Is that how you fell in love with music? You, you played that piano and it just, it, it got to you? Like, uh, well, what got you into music? Uh, my uncle. Your uncle? Yeah, my uncle was a, uh, was a blues mu uh, musician. Well, they're the best. Uh, James Richardson. Uh, he was one of the best. And he had all of the instruments. And so when I went to his, over to his house, after I found him uh, when uh, we hooked up when I was in uh, junior high school, and I went to his house uh, and befriended his stepchildren, uh, I was able to play the bass for the first time. And so uh, I was still a bad kid, uh, you know, And but I got my first bass later on in life. and uh, But I had to go and do a little time, <laughs> and that's where I picked up the piano, and that's what made it all a cohesive. So okay, it runs in the family. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And then you were working as a mechanic to save up for a bass guitar, right? Yes. My father owned a auto shop in Burbank. Uh, it was a legendary shop. It's still there, as a matter of fact. Uh, the shop is still there with the same name. Somebody bought it from him. And so I grew up uh, fixing cars uh, for a living. And so when I dropped out of school, my dad noticed I wasn't going to school. So he <laughs> said, look, son, either you're going to go to school or you're going to come and go to work. And so I went to work. And so at 16, I started fixing cars, and that's how I got my uh, first, got started buying all my equipment and all of that stuff and producing my first record. My first record is available on Discogs. You can see it on Discogs. It, you can hear it on Spotify, iTunes, and all of that. But uh, Ivan Law, anti-drug rap on uh, Discogs is my first record. Wow. Why was it the, the bass guitar that you were saving up for? What was it about that that, that you, you, know, you worked so hard at the, as a mechanic that you wanted that bass guitar? The low end. It's the, <coughs> the funk. End. It's the, you know, it's the funk. It's the drive. It's the, it's the, it's the Bootsy Collins, you know. It's uh, it's the James Brown. You the know? James Brown, yeah. boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's uh, uh, it's 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 you know, it's uh, it's the bottom end. It's the drive of every song. James Brown said the 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 funk is in the bass and the bass is in the bag. And once that once that bass hits you, you know, it once you get that groove, you know, it got you. So it was all about just uh, being able to make that groove happen. And now, during this time, you're about to deal with the peak of the crack epidemic, right? Yes. Now, take me through that. How bad was it? Did, did it just hit? Did you see it coming? Um, it was a slow uh, thing. Then it took off and became major. You know, I had friends uh, that became uh, major drug dealers, uh, like Jesse Harrod. Uh, he's serving 25 to life, will never get out, but he became one of the major uh, drug dealers. I had friends who lost their lives, but it started uh, slow, and then it uh, developed into something that was uh, tremendously uh, detrimental to the community. Because you always hear about it in New York, but you never really hear about the crack epidemic overall in California. Oh, in California, it was, it was terrible. It was, uh, you know, uh, I remember I dated uh, my girlfriend. We went over there. I was going over to her house, taking her home one night, and her cousin was running out of the house <laughs> with the microwave. <laughs> so, <laughs> with that microwave. <laughs> I mean, it was terrible, you know. You, you couldn't trust anybody, you know. Uh, once they got on that stuff, they would do anything to uh, to get the drug. They would steal from you, you know, rob you. Sell, women would sell their bodies. They called them strawberries. Uh, it, was a, it was a terrible time. 
uh, for the uh, community. Uh, it was a big switch. That's when a big switch came uh, uh, during the 80s. The crack epidemic came and then the influx of the uh, Asian business in the community also came at the same time. And do you think that still today has led to some of, well, a lot of the homelessness that we see in, in Cali with all the tents? And they're, they're kind of just segregating them, right? Right now, not really doing anything. Because if you go to a shelter, say you have a dog, that's all you have, right? right? You're homeless. You have right. a dog in your tent. Right. But if you go to the shelter, you can't take your dog. No, you can't take your dog. So you you have to separate from your, your best friend. The only thing you got. Yeah, right? so yeah. As, as people don't do that. So the homeless problem in, in Los Angeles is deep. Uh, we got tents everywhere. Uh, sidewalks on the side of the freeways. Uh, one guy uh, just recently built a house on Hollywood Boulevard, I believe it was. Uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't he build it on wheels <laughs> yeah, or something? Yeah, he built it on wheels or something. He got a structure. Yes, yeah, see if you can find that. There's, there's this guy in California. I, Ivan could put, explain it better, but he actually t he built a house on wheels, yeah, right? Yeah, he built a house on, on uh, a structure. <laughs> he said he got tired because uh, every time the city come by, they make you move everything. You have to take it down and move it. So he said, okay, instead of uh, breaking down the tent, I'll just uh, uh, do it myself. And he built a wooden structure. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, bro, he went to the hills. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, he, he <laughs> could be plush. They were, probably, they were all on the phone when I was coming by. Now, that's know? a penthouse. Yeah, that's if, a penthouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you homeless, that's a penthouse. And you, could, and you make it up to the hills? Woo. Yeah, that's a, you know, so in Hollywood, uh, that's a, he got the first penthouse, homeless penthouse, you know. And uh, i seen the structure on the news. It's uh you know, uh, channel channel eleven was the yeah right there. I'm there yeah, there it is right there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Hey, it ain't bad for a homeless guy. No, not bad, not bad. He's I mean the guy is he's he's got a uh, uh, a roof over his head. He's yeah. out of the elements. Uh, you know, uh, he's doing the best he can, and you know I've I've been homeless, so I, I it's 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 rough to uh, to overcome that. See, I look at it like I would have that and start selling snow cones out the, the window or something. Pop, <laughs> you can sell yeah. hot dogs. Well, hot dogs, anything. Hot dogs, thing. popcorn. Uh, I would sell T-shirts. Yeah. I would start selling T-shirts, socks, and underwear. I would put shells in the whole thing. Uh, and then uh, I'd start selling T-shirts, socks, underwear. I'd go downtown and get me some headphones, some radios. That's cool. And uh, I'd, start, I'd get my hustle on. So when they they drove by there, that would just be my business. And I probably would be there for about six months living out of that. And then I probably would be able to move to Calabasas. Get an apartment or something, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Could you could turn that into a business. Go to Tattoo uh, while you have it up. <clears throat> Ivan has a great poster. So takeoff. The, what happened with him? I don't know. It's 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 uh this this is heartbreaking to me as a preacher. Uh when I created the what what you know is the West Coast Sound and coined the phrase twenty four seven. Ivan, and for people that don't know, what what is the West Coast Sound? That's what uh, what you know Ice Cube them take credit for coming out of the West, the music that came out of the West in the uh, 90s, uh, Death Row, the uh, Dre, the Dre, uh, Dre Day uh, music, uh, Easy tampered with it, uh, which I believe Easy e was a beat maker. The West Coast sound is what came out of the music that came out of the West. It came out of the West when we were having the whole E, because you could obviously tell a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we, the West Coast sound, the uh, yeah. the boom fat, boom fat. But this, I was 28 years old when I did that. So uh, this takeoff is the future mm -hmm. of hip hop, and when we lose these young men like this, we're losing the future. Now, well, do you know if that was like an argument or was it a rival? I don't know. I hear he was at a dice game yeah. and uh, and dice game going bad and everybody is just easy. It's, you know, it's, it's easy. These guys don't realize, uh, Tommy, that it's easy to take a life. It's easy to pick up a gun and take a life. The hardest thing to do is to get away with it for the rest of your life. 
Yeah. Okay. And and a lot of these guys, they don't realize it. Maybe some of these OGs have led them the wrong way, but they're they're not headed to a life of old age where they're going to live a lucrative life. They're going to be just like the I five killer. They're going to be old men mm-hmm. thinking they got away with it, and they're going to say, "Hey, I need you." Because it's something you can't get away, you can't get blood off of you, no matter what. And there's always some type of trail or evidence that can link you, and you don't want to put murder on your resume. No, because you know that one detective is going to walk in and open up that cold case file. He's going to be one of those type of detectives where he doesn't want the new stuff. He wants to close the old ones. Yeah. And he's gonna find you. He's gonna find it. He's there's that there's gonna be that one gumshoe detective. That's what they call him, gumshoe detective. That <laughs> once they get t- <laughs> once they get they they foot stuck on that, then they're gonna be stuck. So, but you know these type of homicides, they're they're quite frequent, and it's heartbreaking. Now, are you, do you see this a lot in California still? Because you know we don't hear about it like we used to. Before, you know, somebody was getting killed left and right. Oh, it's, Before it's, him, the last one I remember, which I thought was such a talent, I can uh, Takashi. Am I saying that right, Rob? Takashi X. He went to the gas station, yeah, the yeah. car wash, yeah. Yeah, and they that, popped him. I mean, that was down here. But, uh, you know, he had a lot of talent. We've had, in Los Angeles, we've had PNB Rock. We've had Slim 400. We've had Drake the Ruler. Um uh, We've had uh, who we uh, the list is so long that you know I can't even name all of the artists, and it's just heartbreaking to me as a preacher. Sure, uh, my heart goes out to the to the parents. You know, uh, you're so proud of your son. They uh, they're using their God given talent to entertain the world, and their ability to entertain and attract fans becomes a death sentence. That's so sad. And they made it out. They made it out of the hood. They worked. You what, know what I mean? What was supposed to be, yeah, you're making it out. Yeah, supposed to be. You're right. supposed to be, you're making it out. But it's it looks like there is no way out. What do you think the problem is? Do you think th- they're being too flashy? They're... They're making the money, but then still hang out with the, st- the wrong crowd. I I I don't think. I I I I hate to blame. Takeoff or Drakeo for being murdered. I I I think the problem. I'm just gonna say. I think the problem that people are trying to do God's business. Things that God should decide. Uh, people or or man is deciding uh, things that a jury should decide. One man is deciding, and and I, I I just think that we we too many people are trying to do God's business, and I don't know what the problem is because uh, you should be able to go wherever you want to go. You would think, right? You should be able to wear whatever you want to wear. Um. Uh, just because I don't like what you said doesn't give me the right to pull out a gun and kill you because I should be, by law, we don't live in that type of age where we're primitive. Uh, we are not that primitive. We are more sophisticated and we live in a, in a, uh, a cultured age where murder is wrong. And we don't have a right to determine who lives and who dies. I think maybe the, once they once they get that record deal and the money, they just don't know how to handle it. And I every time I see it, I see that they're hanging around the wrong people. Well, the I it's 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 up it's up in the air. You know, you know, there, there's so many different scenarios that it could possibly be yeah it's, it's, it's just so uh, much stuff. all you can say is it's sad it's sad it's that's sad. that's all that's all we could say because <laughs> you know, without uh, it's anything i say is speculation because i'm not a investigator to investigate all that stuff so i uh, with all of those murders i just it's sad 
and I wish that uh, Buster Rhymes said today that we need to do better, you know, and so it's sad. That's all I, you know, that's all I can say. I don't know the cause of it. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know what. <laughs> all I know is it's that sad. it's <laughs> sad. And I wish that, you know, they could see that they're getting, re- they're killing the future. Do you know? The music business, I, I, a young man told me the other day that he was going to, uh, he said, man, I think I'm going to make me a video and, uh, and try to make me some money in the rap game. I say, with the way rappers are being murdered, you'd be better off to swim with sharks. <laughs> 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 but, you know, for real, you'd be better off to do something else with your talent because it, it, it happens too often. And whatever the problem is, it's not worth uh, your life. Your life. You know, whatever f- uh, three years of fame, whatever the problem is, it's not worth your life. And, uh, it, if they're saying the field is too crowded, we don't want anybody else, I don't know what's going on. Find something else to do. For Find now, something right? else to do, and I think I, I don't want to be a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> no, Me I don't, neither. I don't want a contract. Hey, is George Floyd really uh, suing Kanye? Did you see that? His family, they said they were suing him for 250 mil. For what? Because uh, he said something? Because Get he said that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> George, George Floyd died of fentanyl, so, so they, you're gonna sue, sue him for 250 million because he said he died of fentanyl. It probably won't go no. <laughs> I know, but it's just so stupid. <laughs> it just probably a kick out the case. So you know, but Kanye's all over the news now. Mm-hmm. I know, but that, that that's just the, that's just insane. But I guess, I guess if you see an opening, you know, everything's money, money, money. Well, the media picks fights. Yeah, I think Kanye's smart as hell. I, I just think he doesn't know. I think he has trouble putting things into words. I, I think his mind's going a million miles an hour. Because if you look at him and you look at Elon, they both answer very similar. Mm-hmm. But Elon's able to, you know, transcribe it out of his mouth much better than Kanye. Whereas Kanye, I think, is just gone. And he's and he's worried about his kids. You know, he don't want to say the wrong thing. and then And they're watching every word he says where right. elon they're watching him but they're not watching him like kanye they're just waiting to pounce on him yeah kanye is you know you you have to be careful when you are uh a successful uh african-american uh and you're up on a pedestal you have to be careful because there's always somebody waiting to looking to knock you off and hoping to knock you off you know uh you might be in a place anyway where they really don't want you. And so as soon as you give them an opportunity, hey, there it is right there. And so they start chopping away, chopping away. Plus, he did get the Kardashian curse. Yeah. yeah. You see, uh, me and him That's always true. joke ha- how Pete, uh, what's his last Davidson. name? Davidson. Davidson. Yeah. The girls he gets, my goodness. But uh, He got away scotch-free from them. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, he, he went nuts last week. He threw a coffee thing he he had a meltdown and his uh he's filming something for comedy central or he's he's doing a film like a serious thing and he just they said he had a meltdown and he went nuts really (laughs) yeah i'm telling you (laughs) there's something true to that that. uh, what's her name the mom oh um what's the mom's name ivan uh the kardashians mom. yeah i'm scared of her chris 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 Yes. Chris, yeah, I'm scared of that woman. Yes. <laughs> the Kardashians are very... Uh, <laughs> they're, they're like the plague, man. They're, well, they're a powerful family. They, you name one guy that got out of that Scott Free. I, I Scott Disick, you know, he's lost his mind. Lamar lost oh, his mind. Gone. Uh, Kanye. All of them. Well, I, I knew Kanye was going to lose Thompson. my mind. <laughs> Trish, <laughs> yeah, Tristan Thompson. Yeah, yeah. Remember how good... I mean, he was good. Yep. And then all of a sudden, you didn't yeah. even hear about him. Yeah, yeah, he lost his. I, I think it was at a at a basketball ben Simmons, game. Ben Simmons was with uh, the Kylie Jenner. Oh yeah, he's you don't he hear sucks. about him. He's terrible. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> they sucked the life right out. Literally, of you. yeah. <coughs> the yeah. Curse. Well, you know, they sucked the life right out of you. I guess you know, and uh, but but Kanye is kind of he might be in a battle with God. Maybe. Yeah, because, you see, whatever you do, you have to allow for God. You know, we have to still 
you know, we might try to get away from him, but we have to allow for the higher power. And Kanye rewrote the Bible. See, he re- he rewrote the Bible. <laughs> I can I can believe that. <laughs> took out every every mention of God. Took that out and put his name there. Oh, so oh, in the beginning, oh, so it, it will say oh, instead oh, of saying in the beginning God created the heaven and oh, the I earth, did. it will say in the beginning oh, it, oh, oh, is he crazy? Kanye created the heaven and the earth. So you put yourself in a battle oh, with God. That's not good. That's not good. No, because no. he's really in control of your life and your blessings. I don't know why I did that one. I I, I can understand some of the the genius things that he has done that just don't always make total sense. But that one, ah, I don't know, Kanye, buddy. That one's... uh, He may be an alien. Maybe he's an alien. might be an alien. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. But that one right there, I just, you know, I would, if I was was ye, you know, I would kind of say, you know, well, God, I apologize for this one. You know, forgive me of that. I might, because I don't think, even though Jesus gives us, he makes us equal, I don't think we should ever eliminate God and put our names in the place where his belongs. <laughs> Rob, can you believe yeah. he did that? No. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and I'm a fan. I told, you know, I told Mark Mikowski at the Grammys years ago, I said that, you know, since, you know, I'm the real beat maker, I said Kanye is really the best at, at, uh, uh, doing what I originatedly originated. So I always thought that he was the best at it. You know, a lot of those guys, I really, you know, admire their work uh, because as a as an artist and a, he's a, a, a hip-hop pioneer, I, I, I followed some of these guys, and uh, I admire, you know, their work. Now, going back to the, the ministry, when you're in that crack epidemic, you got to be seeing your friends selling it, making a ton of money. Yeah. Right? How do you have the discipline to, you know, you were just working as a mechanic, busting your ba- balls to go get to the, gu- uh, the guitar and everything else that you needed. Your friends are making tons of money selling the crack. How did you have the discipline to go into the church to be a minister? And not just the minister, the greatest one at the place you were at. Um. It's my life has seemed like it's always been filled with pain. And uh, I remember, uh, I remember with my brother in law, Algy, rest in peace, he was calling himself selling crack. So I'm going to start there. And so he was going around giving away free. So I was in, I had a bag at the time. He gave me a piece of crack. He said, here. And I sat in the car and I prayed. I said, Lord, if you see any good in me, please don't let me go this way. Because I saw that it was, it turned people into a junkie. And so I prayed. And he came back uh, about an hour later. He said, what you do with that? I said, it's up there. He said, man, give me my crack back. (laughs) (laughs) Because I left it sitting up there. And so it was prayer. And one day I was riding in my car, and I said, okay, Lord, I'll preach. And I started preaching, and and I went on from there, and, and then he said that I was anointed. And so I... Congratulations. Thank you. Not many people could do that. No, it wasn't easy. I'm sure it wasn't. It wasn't easy, and I still had some pitfalls. Uh, I still, I, I didn't make it out of it clean. You know, I thought I was slick. You know? <laughs> so, I, but uh, I came, but God took care of me. And and then how do you go from, you're a minister, you're killing it, you're at the top, and then you get a meeting with the record label, I never even heard of what, McCola? Yeah, McCola Maco- Records. Now, uh, who who is that honor, or who is that Maco- at that time? McCola Records at that time, you, uh, there's a, look at all these rumors all around time. me every day. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. So they okay. they was the main distributor for that, and so when I started doing my music, Monkey That's Chris Monkey Brown. Do, uh, Chris no, Brown made a, he no. did a song with Tiger. Well, they remixed it. I yeah, guess. that I think that's uh, rumors. Is I think that's Club Nouveau. I think it is. Yeah, they just remixed the, it yeah. later on. Yeah, yeah they I'm remixed sorry. it. Yeah. And so, but uh, 
uh, so I looked on the back of the album and, and to see who was uh, distributing the song, and I saw it was them. And so I sent Monkey See, Monkey Do over there. Oh, shit. And so that's how I got hooked up with uh, Found McCola Records. And McCola Records, were, they were a record pr pressing plant on Santa Monica Boulevard. It wasn't really a record label. They were a record pressing plant. So they just had the machines to press the the material the record. Correct, correct. Yeah. They were a distribution. Yeah. Uh, they were a distribution hub. They were what Empire is now distributing all of these artists. Yada. They were the main distributor in the uh, '80s. And now, how does that meeting go? When you walk in and you sit down, take me through that A to Z. Okay. Uh, I I uh, I sent my my demo there it was there for a while before they called me so eventually they call uh ivan can you be here wednesday 11 o'clock yes this so one that's, right yeah that's the 1986 demo robocop dropped the beat and be my baby and so they call me i said yes i could be there so i go to the meeting i get there and dre is there and I asked him what's going on. He says, I don't know. I'm here to meet somebody. Dr. Dre, right? Yeah. yeah. So he doesn't, he's not very inviting. He's not warm. There is no, kind, no, no, uh, hey, man, you about to make it, homie. You know, hey, <laughs> just chill. You about to blow up. They got me here to help you with your music. He's, I don't know. I'm here to meet somebody. Listen to that word now. I'm, I hear you. Body. Didn't even know your name. He didn't know my name. I'm here to meet some body. No, body. A body is B O D Y. Yep. What they have in the morgue. Yeah. So and this is this is you know late eighties, before you know the the killing really became what it is. So I think that. And so as, as you're speaking like that, we have to remember that this is the late eighties where. It's very violent. So when you hear body, right? Yeah. It's not like in 2022 when you hear somebody. Yeah. That's yeah. what you're getting at, right? Yeah. When you hear the word, when somebody tell you I'm here to meet somebody. Back then, you, that could be a dangerous situation. That's could be, you got to be careful. Wow. Because if they say I'm here to meet someone, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But if they say I'm here to meet somebody, wow. he, the man calling you a body. And so I sat there for about 15 minutes, and I left. Uh, McCola, they followed me, uh, but they didn't say anything to me. They paid a friend of mine to leave me sitting in the car all day, so I sat in the car, and I— Because you think this is it, right? You think, you think this is the day. Well, yeah. No, I, I left the record company. I left. But, I mean, when you went into that meeting, you thought, man, something's going to happen here. Yeah, I thought that was it, but it didn't— there was no, the person who they had for me to meet was not inviting. And my spirit didn't connect with his, so I left. I, I didn't feel comfortable. You know, I, what are they doing? You know, you got me sitting next to this guy. All of y'all back there uh, in some kind of meeting, but, but this guy is not inviting. <laughs> So, so you know, you got the wrong person. So now if they'd have had, like, somebody like Bootsy or Roger Troutman or somebody in there, you know, who would have been inviting and say, hey, don't worry about a youngster, you know, you finna blow up. Would have been a different day. You ever meet Roger Troutman? No. Oh, that would have been cool. You knew that as Rob? Mm -mm. He's the one on, like, the All Eyes on Me album. He, he used to put the thing in his mouth, right? He used to put this plastic. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, can you explain Full it? bounce. To the ounce. He's the first before T Pain. There's yeah. Roger Trout. Oh, okay. Yeah, he would put. What would he do? Put it's that plastic carter. down his almost in his throat. Yeah, it's a vocal. It's what they call a vocoder, and uh, it plays with the uh, keyboard, and you blow. Oh, through. okay. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, that was him. That was him. Yeah, that was Roger Troutman, one of the great ones. Yeah. Uh, one of the great uh, musicians of that day. So and then you leave, right? Yeah, I leave, and I leave that demo. Uh, that oh, demo. you leave it with them. Yeah, I leave it with them, and Dr. Dre, now he's heard that. See, he's heard that. And so I go on, and 
I go through my changes in life, I forget about this. It's because I don't know what this is. I don't know what I have. Because you can invent something and you don't know the value of your invention until somebody else tells you. So I didn't even know what I had when I started beat making. It's just that I I wasn't a DJ and the order of the day when I made this was for, we had MCs and we had DJs and they would go in and spin the records and the, and the rappers would rap on top of the records. So I couldn't do that, but I was a bass player. And so I bought the drum machine. I bought the uh, the, the Roland synthesizer. I uh, bought me some rec- a four track recorder, and I put this demo together. And this is and this is the most important piece of music in the history of hip hop. You want us to play the preview? Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, hit the yeah. preview. And then after that, you end up in a situation, right? This is the West Coast style. Yeah. Go to our uh, drop the beat. Yeah, now I can. That's the West Coast right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember that, Rob? We used to be like this as little kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> little, little Dago over there. Oh, you can tell I was poor a long time. Yeah, that's the one where I coined the phrase 24 7. Drop the beat. You won't. That's my cousin. Cousin's good too. Yeah. That's that West Coast. Yeah, this is, this is, this is it. That's funny because yeah, you can you can hear it definitely. That RoboCop definitely. and the drop the beat, you can tell that was recorded a long. I don't even think if you wanted to, you could record it that bad now. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> no, no, I mean not that it's bad. You know, it's just you don't have back then there wasn't the technology we have now, and I don't think there's the technology now available to make it like that. No, there's we'd be on Final Cut yeah, for a year. <laughs> that's four track. That's complete four track, <laughs> and I didn't want to alter it or change it because I I believe that this day would come and that I would be talking about my my song and if I alter it then it's it's no good right because people would be like oh you just made that you just made yeah, that yeah. so I have to leave it in the original form that it was submitted to the record company so that they could say yes, that's it. Yeah, you, no, you can tell. Yeah. Like I said, especially on uh, "Drop the Beat," there, there's no question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and that's what that's what mm-hmm. I, I can remember. Like with RoboCop, <clears throat> I was dating a young girl named Trish at the time, and we went to the movies to see uh, the movie RoboCop. RoboCop. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And man, I came home. I said, I need a beat, <laughs> and I threw on Michael Jackson. I said, okay, that's it. I took, so I, I remade the beat on the drum machine, got on the synth and put the uh, cor- the bass line and put the chords and I wrote the lyrics. There's a brand new dance that just broke out. Not hard to do, just work it out. <laughs> Stiffen up your body and give it juice. Rock your body from side to side. Keep the pop and keep your stride. Do the RoboCop, let's rock. And that's what's up. Did, did it work with the girl? Did it work out for you? Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right, then. With, 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 uh, with, uh, er- well, I ended up, that's Erica <coughs> on Excuse the, me. uh, on the track. So, but with Trish, yeah, we became really good friends. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Now, you leave them and you end up in a motel, right? Yeah. Well, I go through a whole period of, uh, hustling on Crenshaw. Struggling from yeah. what I read, it sounded yeah. like a lot of struggling. I, well, I got married after this. I, I wind up, I get married, and I Congratulations. start. I start a business on Slauson and Crenshaw, and I start selling socks, t shirts, and underwear. And I wind up with a nice store. Uh, that's how I met Nipsey and all of that oh stuff. yeah they called you the sock man right yeah I'm the, I'm <laughs> they the, did they called him the sock man yeah. it's all over yeah i'm the original sock man 
So, and that's, I was on Jefferson and Crenshaw and Nipsey, he was on Slauson. And so, uh, so from there, and I had all types of businesses, had nice stores, sold motorcycles. I'm pretty well known in Los Angeles for uh, business. And so I had that period. And then, then that was after that, there was some things that happened, which I believe God was calling me to this day. And in order for him to get me to this day, he had to take everything out of my pocket because I wasn't thinking about no music. I wasn't thinking about doing nothing. I was making good money. I didn't need nothing. I was living in Calabasas, you know, which is one of the high-end areas where most of the entertainers live at. So I had me a $3,000 a month luxury apartment. Hey. I mean, and eighty and in the eighties yeah. in the eighties that's what maybe ten twenty oh, now? now no yeah. that's oh, not the eighties I I gotta fast I gotta take you up we in we in like two thousand now we so. I didn't I didn't really jumped up in the eighties uh, in the eighties I was just the the mechanic and hustling the outdoor swap meets uh, after the riots that's when I became the sock man after the Rodney King riot how bad was that. Because, you know, we just see it from the outside. We, we don't see it all was, of it. Oh, it was terrible. The uh, Rodney King riot was uh, a uh, very intense uh, night. We all, everybody watched the trial. And when they was found not guilty, it was a disappointment to everybody. And the streets of Los Angeles were inflamed. Uh, my brother-in-law, Tony, he was the first one to die. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. he was, uh, they had a shootout with the police in the Nickerson Gardens, <laughs> and he lost his life in the crossfire. Oh. And so bodies were laying in the streets, uh, buildings were in flame, looters were running everywhere, and the most famous swap meet is the Slauson Swap Meet. Uh, the Asians were on top of that swap meet with uh, AK 47s. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was up hey, they come heavy, huh? You ain't coming in here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then the word was in the street <laughs> don't go over to Slauson swap meet. The Asians on the roof with wow. AK 47s. And, and what's a swap? Why do they call it a swap meet? Uh, because it's a um, it's a gathering of vendors. Okay. Uh, where is you supposed to be able to swap, you know, whatever trade, trade. Yeah. But it's a gathering of vendors, uh, and you go in and discount prices. So they call it a swap meet, but it's a, a gathering of vendors. It's uh, uh, multiple vendors come up, mom and pop shops to make up uh, a big fancy. Instead of a big fancy mall, they make a small swap meet with booths. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until they start shooting each other. <laughs> and, there's eight, and there's AK-47s pointed at you. Well, that's because they, was, that's and because they, they were... And 45s on this side. It. That was, that's because <laughs> they were right. That's because they were looting, and they did one of the... That was one of the swap meets that were uh, saved uh, during the riots. A lot of the businesses were looted and burned to the ground, but they managed to save that uh, that swap meet. Oh, well, that's good at least, right? Yeah, they managed to save that. It was some other structure saved. Where I started my business at, uh, James Turner, he saved that place. Uh, it was the WLCAC food stamp office. He saved that from being burned down. So there was some heroes uh, in, the, uh, in that thing. Yeah. And you had mentioned uh, Nipsey Hussle, right? Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think happened with him? Um, We've had a couple people in, and... <clears throat> I, it seems very odd because he was very close with uh, I can never say his name. He's about to do a documentary on the uh, what's the guy's name with oh, the, the doctor, the uh, doctor who's really into soil, and oh, uh, do you know Phoebe, what I'm talking about, right? Doctor, yeah, Phoebe, uh, yeah, doctor, something like that. I, I, I can't think of his name, doctor. Uh, oh, get it. So he was about to do a documentary on him because uh, Phoebe. And sorry for saying your name wrong, even though it's a situation. CB, 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 Doctor CB, yeah, Sabi, 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 Sabi. Yeah, pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. And he was saying that the soil is so bad that if that 
if that soil gets any worse and the link in the soil, you know, mm-hmm. just look at it as links. Mm-hmm. If one link is over, that affects everything. Right. And Nipsey was about to go do a documentary on him. Now, I don't know if that, you know, I, the conspiracy thing is all crazy. It's just odd that. It, well, I don't, I don't think, know. What do you well, think? He I'm, was murdered you by. You know, stuff. He was shot by Eric. Who's right? Eric? I don't Eric know. Eric Holden. He was shot by one of the local local guys. Um, let me say this that if you're going to be a rapper, don't try to exploit the neighborhood gang to make yourself famous. Mm. Um, don't try to use the hood to as a stepping stone because the the hood is real and uh, gang banging and cripping and all that stuff, that's, that's not entertainment. And you don't want to toy around with that uh, because it's real. And there's a lot of guys who putting in a lot of work. Uh, they've done time for their hood. And so if you're going to be a rapper, don't try to exploit, you know, the hood so you can be famous. And you think that's where he made his mistake? Uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I was when I when uh, when I was locked down because I was, you know, they tried to. Uh, I had to do two years fighting the case. So uh, one of the guys who was uh, bought stuff from me as a kid, his father bought him, he, I was in jail with him, and he was from 60s, and he knew Nipsey well. And so he said that Nipsey was from his hood. But when I met Nipsey, he was just selling T-shirts, and he told me that he had $25,000 up at, a, at an attorney's, uh, for his rap career, so and all I when I went into his shop, all he had was the Crenshaw T-shirts, and so I I can't speak on his affiliation, but I will say, if you're gonna be a rapper, don't try to exploit your neighborhood gang so that you can be famous and say, well, I'm from this hood, you know, and because you could you could get yourself hurt because those gangs are real. And you don't want to play and pretend like you're a gangbanger just to be famous, you know. So you struggle, you work your butt off, <clears throat> you get to Calabasas. Now, where do you come up with the name Monster Beats? Uh, Monster Beats comes uh, when... Uh, That's a good name. Yeah, I like that. When I'm trying to, uh, when I'm getting reestablished, uh, I'm signing up with ASCAP, and they said pick three names, and so I. What, what three names did you give them? I think I, uh, <laughs> I had my old company, which was Star City Productions, my original company, uh, which is Star City Productions, and then I said Monster Beats. I don't know what the other name was. And, well, Monster Beats. And they you can't sent, be better than Monster Beats. Come they on. sent back the thing and said, "Okay, well, we we'll approve you for Monster Beats." And so Monster Beats is a certified ASCAP uh, music publisher. I'm a certified ASCAP music publisher. Now, th- this is the one I really want to ask you about. Uh, is Dre the luckiest man alive or a killer? I think it's out of tab three or four, Rob. <clears throat> now, c- can you break that down for me? Yeah. I haven't I, like I haven't really heard much about him. Um, well, like little bits and pieces. Well, <clears throat> what happened? With this was, you see, this is 2016. Mm-hmm. 2014, my life is in shambles. My wife is gone. My kids are gone. Uh, I'm homeless. And I remember my demo, and I had the record deal. So I put in for a Grammy. And some people decide they're going to play God in my life, and they interfered with my Grammy, my Lifetime Achievement Award for the Grammy. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to take it in a murder investigation. And I started investigating the Tupac and Biggie case right after they turned me down on my Grammy. And this was my question. Is Dr. Dre the luckiest man alive or a killer? So first off, 
he has my creativity. It's not his. Okay. So that's part of the luck. Now you lucky you ran into me. <laughs> 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 you lucky you met me, you know? And I and and when I first came back to the industry, I called Dre. I called him. I said, "Hey man, I'm Ivan Law. I called this record label. Hey man, I'm Ivan Law." Uh, I met Dre McCullough Records. I'm the original beat maker. They gave me his number. They called him. I called Dre. He never returned my phone call. So I reached out to him because I admired his work. I reached out to him. And so after I, no response and I don't get nothing, you know, hey, I need credit for what I did. The Bible says give honor to whom honor is due. So if you did something great in this lifetime, you should get credit for that. And so... I said, okay, my question is, Dr. Dre, the luckiest man alive or a killer? So I wrote this. Now, and so I start out with the fact that I walked out on the record deal, okay? And then I'm talking to Complex because they're posting a lot of stuff about what happened, why is everybody dead, yada, yada. So I'm saying, look, a sudden uh, something, Dr. Dre has something new. After I walk out on my record deal, Dr. Dre has something new, and all of a sudden he does not need anybody. Why? Because he's got my music. When he wants to leave easy, easy dies. Easy, easy dies. But you, you know what somebody would say? You know, just playing devil's advocate, and <clears throat> they would say, "Ivan, you're just mad. You're 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 mad, and you're saying this because Dre didn't answer your call." I wish I was uh, just mad at Dre. Now, uh, Suge admits to poisoning Easy. He admits, really? Yeah, he admits. Ah. Scroll down, scroll up, brother. Scroll up. Go no, up. Uh, it's the other way. Yeah, go go ahead. Go, ahead, go on up. That's what they say. Shug poison easy. Yeah, he admits going up. Right here. Play that. Right. Why the bulletproof vest? Oh, it's not. Oh, no. That's just. It's because you know, your style. It's, You've been you know, in the no, can no, no, for a no, while. No, Let's no, 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 Technology is so high, right? Right. So if you shoot somebody, you go to jail forever. So the kids, you don't want to go to jail forever, right? Right. So they got this new thing out that people sell them all the time. They got this stuff to call, they get blood from somebody with AIDS, yeah. and then they shoot you with it. Oh, so well, that seems bad. Happen, that's yeah. a slow death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the AD thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Is he crazy to say that on Jimmy Kimmel? You see, uh, you he's see? out of his mind. So he basically, and Man. only the killer would know. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, you have to, you know, who would have thought? Now, you got to take that into consideration because he's sitting there, he's saying. Yeah, making a joke of it, but well, knowing that. And then we're talking about Suge Knight here. We're yeah. not talking, you know. So, But, but now you got to understand that Suge Knight started out as Dr. Dre's bodyguard. Okay, so Dr. Dre, uh, be, Suge Knight begins his career uh, as a subordinate to uh, Dre. Correct. So now, so he Dre get once out of his contract. Easy says, Dre Day is what an easy payday. I'm gonna get paid on all Dr. Dre's future work. No deal. No, Y'all yeah, let him out of his contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm still gonna get paid. Everybody don't know why though. He's gonna get paid because Dr. Dre has my sound. And that sound was acquired while Dr. Dre was with Ruthless Records. So he could take that sound with him no matter what? So he, No, he can't take it with oh, him. Oh, he can't take it with him. No, because Ruthless is really the steward of the sound of hip-hop or the West Coast sound. Because it was Ruthless Records, Dre was in the contract with Ruthless. So when my demo was left on the table, that goes to Ruthless. That goes to easy, becomes the steward. That's right. That. That's right. Ruthless. Right. So easy would be the steward. So now, but once he eliminates easy, now he doesn't have anybody to claim credit for this magnificent body of work. Uh, easy, which I believe the real motherfucking G's. I think that's an easy beat. I think that's a beat that easy actually made. 
uh, because he says, here's another fresh beat for your ass, Drake. And so they was in competition. Back and forth. They yeah. was in competition yeah. to make a beat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So so anyway, now, so Easy dies. Easy, the fastest A's death on earth. I thought Easy was poisoned because he died too fast. And then I found the Jimmy Kimmel clip, and it confirmed. How quick did he die? Uh, what, what, two weeks, a week? Wow. Mm. You just get A's and die in two weeks? This is ridiculous. I don't imagine I was still rolling around. <laughs> That's ridiculous <laughs> because even Rock Hudson had a chance to fly around the world, which I say in here, and try to get treatment. Right, because it, it starts as HIV and then turns to AIDS. And even when it does, you still got you time. You still got time. You know, maybe time. it's hospice or whatever, right? Yeah, you still got time, but he didn't have no time. Whew. Powerful batch. Boom. Powerful batch. It was, a, it was yeah. an assassination. <laughs> he goes powerful batch. Yeah, <laughs> really yeah. powerful. They got a high purity. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. strong. Maybe a little, high, little too high purity on that yeah, one, buddy. Yeah, it was strong. <laughs> so, like he said, you get somebody who's infected with AIDS, they're yeah. about to die, and you shoot them with that, mm. and it's and so 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 now I see. So so now so he goes so he goes solo. And now the real truth is. The biggest lie that's told about my brother, my friend, the biggest lie that's told about him is that he left death row. It's the big lie. He didn't leave. Dre didn't leave death row? No. He was fired. Shook fired him. Shook. Mm. There's a clip. Uh that I have, I have a clip of Tupac where he says, Tupac says it wasn't my, uh, it might be on the next one, Rob. Is it on here, Ivan? Nah, it might be on my YouTube channel. My, you, you got my YouTube. Yep, I got it for you. Yep. So, let me see. You got my YouTube up. Where, where is it? Uh, I still can't believe you should have said that on Jimmy Kimmel. Where is it? Where is it? No, that's not it. Where is it? That's right. Just tell me what he said. So yeah. he, he says that Tupac says it wasn't my idea. He says Suge, uh, that Dre was out, he, with his words, sucking dick and fucking bitches. Yeah, I, heard, I heard Pac say that plenty <laughs> and, of times. Yeah. And while I'm in the studio putting it down, put whooping asses, making songs, and he's out BSing, and he's owning the company too, and and he said, I got to go and tell everybody that he did this and did that, and he didn't do it. And he said, we don't need that here. See, Dr. Dre is not able to do the work. And he has my idea but he doesn't have the mechanics to perform and produce independently of others. Tupac so, killed him on Machiavelli? Yeah. Against all odds, and I think bomb first. Well, he went let me, in let me, on Dre. The, Dre made the, the mistake Dre made. If Had Dre left Pac alive because the Eminem demo was submitted when Tupac was alive. I believe that demo was submitted when Tupac was alive. Eminem is the Elvis of rap, mm -hmm. okay? So if Dre had a left Tupac alone, left Biggie alone, went and did his thing with Eminem, he still would have killed him. He would have smoked him because Eminem is the Elvis of rap. He would have, he would have, Tupac and, and, and Biggie would have had the black fans. He would have came in with the Elvis of rap. He would have had all the Anglo-Saxon fans. And the blacks would have been saying the same thing like they was about Elvis. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> and you ain't lying either. Yeah. Uh, really? See, see Eminem, nobody came like Eminem. No. That first album? Wow. Eminem got cheated. Because he didn't get it. He, there was nobody there. Eminem, Eminem is a battle rapper. Yeah, yeah. There was nobody there for him to battle. And if there was, he'd smoke him. Yeah. With the, the people that he was prepared to go against was murdered. Yeah. So he he's not. there's nobody in his league. He's the Elvis of rap, man.
the dude, man, he didn't have to do that. He he could have just went with Eminem and would still been the greatest. Is Eminem still with Dre? Uh, no, I, I think all those guys are independent. Man. Independent, right? Yeah. Yeah, but, all that streaming changed everything. Yeah, it, 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 Shady Records. He got Shady. He got Shady Records, so, you know. But those guys, uh, you know, they, there was a lot of unnecessary things because these guys are, are great, you know. They're great. You know, you're dealing with real talent. They're great. Go to uh, the Hollywood visual. This is good. All right, take me through this, uh, Ivan. You really put something really nice together here. Okay. Uh, this is uh, my, uh, my pitch, my visual pitch for the movie. Hollywood, uh, the Tupac and Biggie Homicides uh, documentary uh, into my investigation that led to the solving of the uh, cases. Uh, and, uh, I have the book. The book is available. Uh, I have. Uh, there's a version where you can read it on Amazon free on Kim, on on Kindle right now, but I'm, I'm I want to rework it, and so you could pre order the 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 newer version I'm gonna have on Barnes and Noble. Yeah, we have it up there. Uh, next tab is his book, I believe. Yep, right there, right. Yeah, yeah, you could pre order it right there on Barnes and Noble for nineteen bucks. And when will that be out, Ivan? Uh, I'm. Let's see, I'm trying to get it to, I got to work with the Ghost Rider and get it, you know, worked out. But if you want to read what I have now, you just have to go to Amazon. Amazon? Yeah, okay, it's cool, available cool. on Amazon now. So, and my claims are that Dr. Dre, now I didn't, uh, I focused on Dr. Dre because I knew he was fake. And so, uh now, the ends of the West Coast sounds uh, is what be a beat maker, trying to, to be the beat maker is what has led Dr. Dre to be the serial killer, uh, the alleged, I'm going to say alleged on this show, on this, uh, the alleged serial killer that I believe that he is. Okay, so let, let's do it like this. <clears throat> okay, so we have the East Coast, West Coast fighting like crazy, right? right? Tupac's going after Biggie heavy. Biggie really, at least in the public, he's not really saying too much back. Mm -hmm. Diddy's scared to death. We already know that. He wired money over to the Crips in California. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, Ice Cube uh, says that it had nothing to do with East Coast, West Coast. Really? Yeah. This uh, go go to my page. I know I got that video up there. I I, I re my YouTube the YouTube. Ice Cube. He says, uh, no, go go down, go back down. Uh, I think that's right it. Here? Yeah, yeah. Play that one. We're talking to Ice Cube. His murder is still unsolved. Who do you think killed him? Do you have any idea? You know, I have no idea. You know, from what I see, you know, from what I understand, it seemed like some kind of hit. Um, it don't seem like random violence. So, um, you know, it's a, it's, you got to act about the people who, who wanted him dead, you know, um, or the people who wanted to... To get other people blamed. Now, the thing is, it's like, and it, it, it was a situation, you know, when you feud in public, you know, if somebody come knock you off, then everybody gonna think the other guy did it. So it's always room for an opportunist to stick their nose in there to, to get the pot stirred. So you just never know. <clears throat> I see what to Ice Cube. So what he's saying is, you can. So we all think everybody thinks it's Orlando Anderson. So everybody's heads turned to Orlando Anderson, and that's the time when somebody else could sneak in and pop somebody. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's start with Tupac. How about that, right? <clears throat> okay. So Tupac's at the MGM, gets in a fight with Orlando Anderson because that necklace was stolen at the strip, the death row necklace. They get in the fight. Orlando Anderson leaves. Pac and his crew leave. They get to a red light. 
as far as we know before you, a white Lincoln or a Cadillac, white Cadillac. Yeah, happens That's to come up true. at the, the red light at the exact same time as they're going to Club 6 or, or whatever. All that's true. All that's true. Okay. Now, who's in that car? I That I don't know. Okay. Okay. Now, well, this is what I know just from Greg and the documents. It was Keefe, Orlando Anderson. Oh, I'm not going to remember the other names. They're all dead anyway. The only one that wasn't dead was Keefe. Yeah. And and but Keefe, I find it hard for myself to confess to a capital murder case. Well, they gave him a deal. Remember, he was looking at life for yeah. all that ecstasy. They let him out. So his choice was: you tell us what happened and prove it, or you're going to get buried. But so he says, Orlando Anderson, who was at the time the head of the Crips, that Tupac hit. Where it wouldn't have mattered if it was Tupac, like you said about the streets earlier. You made a very good point. When you're playing with those gangs, it don't matter if you're Tupac, Biggie, John Doe, and you hit the leader, he's going to come after you, right, Ivan? Well, he's got to. Well, I think that uh, now that's, that's, that's not the story that law enforcement is working on. Uh, the. The people who were right behind the car, they're dead. Um, the people who were Gaddafi, who were riding behind the car, and somebody said that they saw the shooter's arm and it was as black as the gun. Uh, there are descriptions that don't describe uh, Orlando. And I don't know, man. He's pretty dark. But uh, Orlando... But Pull up Orlando Anderson. I it, see a lot of people don't even know it. The Ice Cube in Orlando was bused to the same school. Um, that Orlando is. Uh, th- that, yeah, I mean he's dark, man. No, nah, he's not that dark. <coughs> he, he Tupac is darker. Uh, uh, Orlando is 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 not that dark, but. Um, I don't know. At night, he puts his arm out. I don't think you can tell. That's but, my opinion, but I respect your opinion. But 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 listen, this is the deal. So I, we we agree that the Cadillac drove up on the side, right? Yeah, the Cadillac drove up. That's un, you can't deny that. that. And then but, there was a car behind it with Gaddafi, the outlaws. Right? Yeah, the Tupac's crew. Okay, so then you take me from there. Okay, so what 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 we really have is. You can't just kill, walk up and blow Tupac's brains out and not get caught. If you're going to kill somebody like like that, then it's, it's it needs to be something so that you can distance yourself. And it was in Vegas, and there was a lot of corruption. Yeah. A shit lot, ton of corruption. A lot of corruption. And th- got to remember now, this happened six months after Dr. Dre was fired. From death row. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So, what really happened was, could it? You know, law enforcement. They got everything. They're going after Dre, but Dre was extremely, probably really upset that his bodyguard. Now you bigger than me. Wait a minute. He's running death row. I hired you. You were my flunky. You were my slave. And now you're bigger than me. No, I can't have that. The night Tupac was murdered is the night Death Row was put out of business. That is true. It was over after that. Machiavelli, that was it. You out of business. They released Machiavelli, and that was it. That was it. And 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 Suge was broken. And he went to uh, Dre's house and said, just give me my masters. And the news media, I remember that night. And the news media asked Dre, what did he want? Well, he wanted his masters because everybody was looking at Suge like everybody. he's the monster. Well, you know, in Bomb First in the beginning, they, they probably did it to sell a pile of records, but it goes, Suge shot me. Suge shot me. You can hear it in the very beginning of yeah, Bomb First, but, the first track. But uh, but that throws everything on Suge, which I personally don't think Suge would care if it made him a ton of money, and it did. Well, but Suge, it, it, 
you'd have to be a, a lunatic <laughs> to have somebody murdered while you're sitting in the car with them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because you know you, you can't. You got to distance yourself from it. Not to mention that that's pretty risky. Yeah, you, well, you're well, gonna it can go anyway. Or yeah, I mean you're gonna or, you're gonna well, trust somebody to go. Well, well, see, go back, and I'm gonna show you how. Wh- go back to um, the uh, RoboCop. Yeah. Now scroll down. Stop right there. Go, Mister Lay. This video right here, he shot at me. He shot at you? No, oh. at at, at Mister Lay. That's how I was able to convince. Lieutenant Thompson, LAPD, that they needed to investigate Dr. Dre for the murders of Tupac and Biggie. Any man who shoots at his wife. Yeah. Before, uh, see, they, they keep that quiet. Yeah, see, that's been quiet. I, that's, you see, ever hear I, that? I dug all of this up in my investigation. I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. He was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> but yeah, but she says in here he shot at me. The bullet missed me by inches, and I told the lieutenant, anybody who says Dr. Dre didn't kill anybody without a thorough investigation is an infected roach. And he says, okay, I'm putting your name in the biggie file. But so, what do you think happened? Uh, so, so does Dre? Pay Anderson to, no. to shoot him. An- How does Pac die? I, I believe, in your opinion, yeah, I, I believe Pac was gunned down by expert marksmen, the police, the crooked cops. I believe Orlando was a scapegoat. He's a victim. You know, he's a victim. He 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 was put there to take the blame. But how do you, how do you disregard the fight at the MGM? That's that was. You know, if you're the head of the Crips and to, and somebody punches you and on the ground and get and kicks you, a, you don't think Ivan from coming from there that he's not going to get in that car on his own and go blast him? Well, see, cause, see, okay, Suge, if we look at the fight. Should kicked him too. I know. And should got bigger feet, and he's bigger than Tupac. So who you going which kick you gonna feel the most? Yeah, but I'm gonna take out Tupac. Why? Because Tupac Why punched should? Tupac punched me right in the face, right blind forward in front of my boys. And if I take Tupac out, mm-hmm. that hurts Sugar a lot more than taking Sugar out. Well, it, it's it's just not. Um... But then again. Again, you know, See, to, to only hit Tupac. I mean, it's not like these guys are uh, trained artsmen or what would you call it? Uh, uh, marksmen. Uh, mar- trained marksmen. You know what that's I mean? Right. For him to only get a graze. Well, the the uh, when you really do the research, it says that the police killed Tupac and Biggie. Both. Uh, 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 listen. So you think Orlando had, he was not the shooter? No. So you think... No. The police were in that that Cadillac. Yes, and, and they, they were driving it. But why yeah. would Keefe say it was Orlando? Uh, hey, or if, else? if you tell me you're going to let me out yeah. of jail, if I lie to you. Why don't you just say it's the cops? Huh? Why don't you just say it's the he cops? He ain't coming out of jail. Yeah. But that was Vegas, That's though. That's because they want to close. They, 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 well, see, the story that you're saying came up after I wrote this. The story that you're telling me about uh, the little homie Orlando, that comes up after I write this blog. After Dr. Dre, I put this on his page before you get that story. They tried to kill me after I wrote this. I'm sure they didn't like that. (laughs) I'm sure they didn't like that too much, especially that one. Yeah, he put it here. I bet that didn't go over too well. Yeah, I put it on his page. Yeah, here, 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 yeah. I know you killed Tupac and Biggie. And so then they, while I was in custody, uh, while I was in custody fighting the life case, because, uh, uh, I, I, man, I'm going to tell you something about this thing. This thing is spiritual, man. And I'm going to tell you, man, uh, the only reason why I'm here today is because uh, I believe that I got Tupac, I got Biggie, I got James Brown. I got my mama. I got every <laughs> Marvin Gaye and everybody up there in heaven saying, "Help him, 
Look at what they're doing. Help him. Because, see, this thing is spiritual. This thing is spiritual. This, this thing this thing is something that when God decides it's time for a reckoning, it's time for you to pay for your sins. But I still don't understand how Dre organized it. So explain to me from your research how did Dre organize the death of Tupac? Well, they How did it happen? This thing was financed. You just don't kill a multi-million dollar. Absolutely. See, see. So take me, not the spiritual thing. Just take me. How how does Dre organize this hit to go down, Tupac? Well, uh, the the financier Dre, I don't believe he was able to finance it by himself. Uh, that's where Ice Cube comes in. No P Diddy. No. No, oh. they, 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 he was investigated hard and heavy, and so if it would have been P Diddy, he'd be gone already. Okay, he'd be gone. He'd be gone. You dealing with you know those guys? They they investigated P Diddy, they investigated Suge, and they wasn't able to connect the dots. They always believed that those were hits. But they couldn't figure out who paid the money. That was the whole thing. That so, was the whole so, thing. So you know, there's a hit. That's clear. Your opinion is it was it was cops that were it well, was they, professionals doing it. Well, see, they couldn't figure out who paid the money because everybody was dead. Right. Everybody Orlando's dead. Everybody in that car is dead. Poochie's so, dead. Poochie's dead. Yeah. Uh, 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 Kevin Gaines is dead. Yeah. Okay, so everybody's dead. So you, they can't. They couldn't connect it, but I was able to say, hey, look, you need to look at Dre. So who finances the money to take care of Tupac? Ice so, so, Cube. Dre, so Dre contacts Ice Cube they get for the money. They get together. They get together. They get the money. They send it to Cali who do, or Vegas. Who do they send it to? Well, in your opinion, I don't, like where does it go? Well, well, see, all of these guys, those everybody worked for Death Row. All of the cops worked for Death Row, and Dr. Dre was Suge's partner at Death Row. So whatever contacts Suge had, Dre had. So if Suge had the police in his pocket, then Dre had them in his pocket too, and whoever had the biggest paycheck. And when they came up with that paycheck for the Pac, for Pac and Biggie, hey, they, they jumped on it. They was about the money. And it took a lot of money to hit Tupac and Biggie. It, it, you just don't hit guys like that because they stomped you out. And it's like, hey, you stomped me out. Now I want to be on your record. That makes no <laughs> sense. You know? You know it's, yeah, but Orlando Anderson got stomped out over a fight. Yeah, over but it's it's a whole lot of people. He wasn't. If Tupac was the only one that stomped him, then I would say okay. But you had quite a few people there, and I'm gonna tell you something, man. If 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 all them people had stomped me, and I got up and I decided I wanted to retaliate, I wouldn't just shoot one person. But if you had to pick one, who would you pick? The biggest one. <laughs> I'd pick the biggest one. I, if if I had to, to 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 get so back, I, I, I I'd, I'd pick the biggest out. one with the biggest foot. The one who hurt me the most is the one who I'd want to get. I see what you're saying. If it's strictly over a fight. Yeah. Then you would you would go after the one who hit you hit you the most. Hit hit me the hardest. Yeah, I get that. You hit me harder than anybody else, brother. You know, and and so they did. There was a think tank I saw with the police, some kind of where, someplace, and they, because it's all kind of theories that they were shooting at Suge, it wasn't Tupac now, you know, we, they wasn't shooting at Tupac, they was trying to, the, the uh, Suge Knight wife theory. What's her theory? They were shooting at Suge. All the bullets went so low, I mean, <laughs> how, how the hell could it get to Suge? And they said, so the LA, so law enforcement, they did, they did, the, they did the, the think tank and they said, well, if they was trying to hit Suge, how could they miss him? 
as big as he is. Right. And so they hit Pac. Those were expert marksmen. Those guys were hit in key, you know, vital uh, areas. Uh, now, it's law enforcement obviously has found something that they're able to tie Ice Cube and Dre to the crimes. Pull up, Rob, pull up the car. Uh, put in uh, the BMW Tupac was shot in after he was shot. Because you can see it's all low. But where? why would Ice Cube want to be involved? What, what would be his... What would be the benefit to him to be involved in getting rid of Tupac? Easy. Well, number one... Number one, easy. Let's let's say easy murdered by. They know easy was murdered. So I mean, I mean it's pretty so, clear to me. So they I'm with you chance. on that one. So we will get you back for easy. So Ice Cube and Easy might is tight. They the NWA, right? So they they tight. Okay, and then not only that, Ice Cube and Dre. Yeah, like Ivan. Look at these bullets. Go back to the other one, Rob. How is that going to possibly hit Shook? It's not. There's no way it could hit Shook. So I'm saying, like, what is his like? No disrespect Pac. to his wife, but it's, they're shooting at Pac. That's where Pac's at. I mean, he's yeah, not they, even aimed they, anywhere they near want, him. They want Pac out of the way. Yeah. See, see, everybody should uh, Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. See if you can blow up that one. They know about the music. They both know that, hey, we freaking to take this music. Ice Cube got a song out that says, we got it now, you ain't getting it back. So they know about the beat making. They, this is, this is legendary. This is an opportunity. There's not even one high. No. No, yeah. these, are, these are expert marksmen. Yeah. You're That's right. expert. Yeah, hey, you're right. That's not no. That's a perfect that's shot. That's not no Orlando Anderson. That is a perfect shot. Huh? Those are expert marksmen. That's not a Lando Anderson. That it was just some guy shooting. He'd just be boop, 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 and it'd yeah. be like fucking thing. That's everywhere. a perfect shot, right? I, I don't. I mean, to fucking hit him. I mean. Come on, do you think that a Lando Anderson was that much of an expert of a marksman? I don't. I mean, I'll give you that because if you're, I, if you're shooting too, you're just shooting. So you're just boop, 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 yeah. boop, boop, and there's bullets gonna be here, there, there, here, here, there, 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 and they're kind of centrally located. They're and exactly yeah. kind of almost at the body parts you would want to hit. Yeah. yeah. So this these are this is yeah. somebody who spent time in the gun range. Yeah. They know where to hit, they know where the vital organs is, and they're gonna hit it. Okay. And so they, they Ivan, I'll tell you what, the picture of that car, that, that's a big thing. Yeah. You, you you should have that on your website because when you dig into it like we are right now, we're yeah. blowing it up. Yeah. Things are starting to look a little bit a little, like bit, a little bit like something. <laughs> yeah, see? It Rob, was, what are you thinking? Yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, unless Orlando Anderson's uh, practicing at the shooting range three times a week I mean, uh, and taking days off from the corner, I mean... So now, I, don't I, get me wrong. Before I was a preacher, I grew up as a crip. So... Could you shoot like that? Uh, if you wanted to? I'm, I'm a good shot. The guy who tried to kill me, I shot him. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I would be able to uh, pull up to a car and dump like that and hit all the vital organs through the. And then we got to put in perspective too. This is fight night. There's cars everywhere. Tons of Tyson fight. And plus you're drinking. Yeah. You're 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 drunk probably. Yeah. You're not firing straight. Right. At there, there's you're, no way those guys. When you're drunk, you're driving, you're following somebody, you're just. What? You're the, just what? Wild. The Crips went to the Tyson fight? What did they do? Have a uh, Diet Coke? No, nah, they were drinking. They were drinking. You know. I tell you what, I don't think an angry, a person who was upset or angry could shoot that accurate either. No. No, that's true. Did they do? Because you would have to be. Uh, did they do a blood alcohol test on any of the guys when they got them? I wonder. I well, know. I don't think they, you know, should have left the scene. Sure, but I'm. First. The but shooter, though, I'm saying, did they do a. The, Alleged, alleged shooter. No, nah, because uh, they they talked to Orlando and they let him go. So, but he's the only one that they questioned. And because yeah, they he, talked to him and then they killed him. He yeah. was he was dead within what three Days. six months. Yeah, because yeah. see the the guys who did this don't want to get caught. And the only way not to get caught is 
you 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 have to get rid of everybody and that leaks to you and so that's why these guys were able to fly above the radar for many years <clears throat> See, I never looked at the car like that and how accurate that was so yeah. we, so so your theory and from your research is that Dre and Ice Cube got together Ice Cube had an issue because of EZ, right? I, 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 now, I went to, when I went to law enforcement, I went with just Dre. You need to look at Dre. And then after he came, after the article came out, uh, 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 Dr. Uh, uh, demons, uh, beats, beats uh, demons and gangsters in the world of Dr. Dre, then I called back. And they said, yeah, we're going to go after Dr. Dre. And I said, you know, maybe Cube has something to do with that, too. He said, yeah, we're going to get him, too. So they figured out they were able to see the link. But I initially just went with Dre. So uh, Cube is obviously the financer, you know. Uh, and you're saying because of Easy e that, that that's, I, that's Cube's involvement I, in killing Tupac? I, I I think that it could be uh, just also greed. You know, I just don't. Under, I, I just can't greed. see where Ice Cube would fit in killing Tupac. Yeah, yeah. the he, greed. He had a problem with Tupac. The greed. Yeah, the greed. The greed. But he wasn't it's, really doing anything. It's the wrong. greed. It's what was Ice Cube doing then, though? Because see, the it's the see what what this is is the killing of Tupac is the killing of an opportunity. And the reason I was able to figure out also that they were, did it is because they blocked my opportunity. See, it's the same thing. If you kill a man, you kill his opportunity. And if you kill a man's opportunity, that man is dead. Without opportunity in life, it's no good because everything is about opportunity. So Tupac was murdered, his opportunity gone. Biggie murdered, his opportunity gone. And with that opportunity gone, that put Ice Cube and Dre and Snoop as the only rappers that was basically left at that time. And they were able to reassemble and build from from there, but uh, it's 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 greed. Now, do you think do you think that you so you think P Diddy had nothing to do with Tupac, nothing at all, nothing, <coughs> okay. nothing. So Ice Cube, Dre, they set it up. Now, do you think the actual shooter, the professional shooter, do you think he's still alive? I don't think nobody who had <laughs> shoot, <laughs> shooting them guys and who could have connected them to Ice Cube and Tupac. Dead men tell uh, to no Ice tales. Ice Cube and Dre still alive. I don't think so. What's that, Rob? Dead men tell no tales. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't think that they. They. Uh. That the killer is uh, still alive. So do you think that that just uh, if we're saying Ice Cube and we're saying Dr. Dre, you think those are the only two dudes right now that know? That they did it, you know themselves. They had it. They had this hit ordered, or do you think there's somebody else out there, wives, girlfriends, somebody that knows? Well, I no doubt uh, there's other people that know. Um, after all of these years, they they've assembled mm -hmm. and uh, they have friends. I'm pretty sure that kind of know what happened. Yeah. Uh, but at that time, I, I, I believe all involved should to. Uh, should to involved in what? Yeah, I, I believe all involved in, 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 a, in a certain kind of way. Even in Tupac? Yeah, I, I believe all involved. I, I, I believe that everybody knows who did it and why they did it. But, I mean, you don't think Suge let it happen or knew it was going to happen, do you? Um... I always thought maybe. I always you, thought he had something in it. You know why I thought maybe? Because Tupac wanted to leave death row. He wasn't getting paid. Like, that fucking car wasn't Tupac's car. That was under Suge's name. 
everything that was given to Tupac, like the little peanuts the Shug was giving him, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he started bitching and bitching and bitching in in his songs, especially a lot of the unreleased songs, as you know, Ivan, that mm-hmm. had then come out. And he wanted he was leaving. As far as I know, he was leaving with the outlaws. Well, I from what I I don't or maybe know, an umbrella. Well, they said Death Row East that he was supposed to go do oh, yeah, that's Death right. Row East. Forgot about that. So I don't think I I I Shug uh Tupac was Suge Golden Goose. So but I'm skeptical about the three million dollars that Dre owes Suge. What do you mean? Dre owes Suge uh uh, Suge, Suge is complaining that Dre owes him three million dollars. Suge's complaining that the world owes him no, three million no, dollars. It, there's a he, <coughs> they, Suge was shot up nine times at Chris Brown's party. Really? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Chris Brown's my favorite, yeah. by the way. He was shot up nine times at Chris Brown's party. Yeah, I remember. So and and he was saying that he's so fucking big he can't even kill him with nine why, shots. <laughs> well, that's why he was scared. That's why when he went to the to the, the the shoot of of uh, uh, straight out of Compton, he when was he so scared over, he ran over. The yeah, guy. he didn't even try to. I don't think but he was scared. Yeah, he was he was scared. scared for his life. You yeah. try, you shot him nine times. <laughs> and nine, you know. out of here. <laughs> yeah, he, he shouldn't have went. Yeah. yeah, he shouldn't have even went to the uh, to the shoot. No, he, you know, but he tried to play hard, and he was there with somebody who wanted to, who wanted to get rid of him. So he shot him nine times. But he was saying that, and then he he. Wanted to sue him, but he's saying that he owes him three million dollars, uh, three uh, three hundred million or something like that. Uh, it's a lot of money, and I'm I'm wondering why did he said he owes him that for some type of management thing, and I'm wondering is that because hey you let us kill Tupac and you make money on one artist? But I don't know, but I I know one thing is that it didn't. It didn't have to happen. It's sad that that you know that happened. And uh, do you have any theory who who shot him at Chris Brown's concert? Nah, the party? No, no, no theory on that one. Nah, no, 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 too, no. too many on that one. Nah, I don't know nothing about that. I don't know, only thing. Well, he's standing hell away from yeah. sure. <laughs> he's like, just in case somebody's out there that should can make a vote, I don't know nothing. Well, uh, <laughs> hey, look, I don't blame you. You know, it's I'm, not, just, messing it's just I'm messing with you. It's, I don't know nothing about the, the Chris Brown thing. I just know it happened. Yeah. And 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 he says that it was Dre that put the hit on him for the for the Chris Brown thing. So, but this thing, man, uh, with Ice Cube and and it's a sad thing because it's a tragedy for the African American community. Uh, because we lost Tupac. A great asset to us. We've lost Biggie, a great asset to us. And I don't know about you, but I enjoy the hell out of Ice Cube's movies. I do. I enjoy the hell out of his movies, man. I can watch Anaconda over and over. (laughs) 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 You know, I enjoy this guy's movies. You know, I like his songs. See, Ivan, that that speaks a lot about you because just like me personally, on a personal level, I hate Robert De Niro. Mm-hmm. With a passion, but as an actor, I think I mean he's great. Yeah. He was even good in the the movie with the girl where he was at the airport yeah. and like the Family Guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean he was he's a great actor, yeah. but as a person, it, you know. it, I have to admit, you know, Ice Cube. It's a tragedy for us because we lost Tupac, we lost Biggie, and and then Ice Cube and Dre are heroes, but then we find out that they're not so heroes. So it's 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 a tragedy for us as the African American community, and 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 I, I I I I it's sad because Ice Cube and Dr. Dre managed to doesn't matter how much money you have, because the scripture says what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul, that money does you no good if you're going to wind up on death row. So what they managed to do is waste my life, Tupac's life. Biggie life and their life. Well, I'll tell you one thing. <clears throat> I was a big Tupac fan, and my my best friend in high school, he was a Biggie guy. Mm-hmm. And every white, black, 
Spanish, Asian, Chinese, it didn't it matter. Didn't matter. Yeah. They were listening to Tupac or Biggie. Yeah. And they were blasting it down the windows with the, remember us kids used to have biggie, the bass biggie, system? Biggie, biggie. Yeah. You were Biggie. See, biggie, I was biggie, Tupac. Biggie, Biggie, Biggie. biggie I was blasting. You see, sometimes the words just hypnotize me. But I like Tupac's <laughs> lyrics. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, Biggie, he had good lyrics like, you know, pop lyrics maybe like rap and work tupac had a hardcore lyrics about the streets and and what it yeah, what biggie was things more like biggie was more like parties baby. more like a party we're chilling we're chilling right party. yeah biggie was a a, a laid back uh metaphor i think i think uh biggie was like a freestyler yeah he was that's 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 the way to put yeah. it yeah, where, i where, think where tupac every line was pinned he, yeah. he pinned every line tupac did much freestyle uh, he pinned every line, and every line to me at least had a had a meaning. Oh uh, yeah, I must have listened. I think I listened to every single song. But then when his mom got a hold of the the uh, unreleased tracks and changed the beats, yeah. remember that? Yeah. Well, see, those guys, those those they were geniuses of that time. Now let's go to Biggie because this this is a big one here. Now, <clears throat> if you're P Diddy and you're Biggie, why in the Hell, would you go to California to shoot hypnotize, or which I, that was what it was, right? Hypnotize. Why in the hell would you take your best guy there six months after Tupac had shot to California, where if you're worried about if you're not worried about Suge because you're in cahoots with him or you already know, still there's so many Tupac fans in California. You're gonna take Biggie. And you are going to go to California six months after that? There, well, to me, there is no way that Biggie w or that Puff Daddy was not behind that one. There's no possible way in my mind, because I know for sure I saw the video and everything. Even though that guy keeps changing his story, mm -hmm. I'm sure you love him. Uh, what's his, the security guard's name? Uh, I was for oh Gene. <coughs> Gene, yeah, he, he's changed his story seventeen thousand times. But the original, they leave the club. Tell me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. They they leave the club. There's two vans, two green vans. Biggie gets in the, the van. He wants to go meet the girls. Diddy, supposedly, gets told, hey, there's trouble up front. He was supposed to be in the same van as Biggie. Mm -hmm. But Diddy goes back into the club. Then he comes back out and goes in another van way behind Biggie. Or cars behind Biggie. They roll up, Biggie's right there, boom, done. Now, who is P. Diddy with Biggie around? You know who he is? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know who he is in 2022? Uh-huh, well, uh-huh. What he uh -huh. got in the, Come on, Ivan, the, award, you know. the award that he just got in 2022. He would never have gotten it. No, he got that award because. B P. Diddy? Yeah, I, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that uh, that might just have to do with the people uh, who were putting together the fact that the case was solved might have just decided, hey, we'll give this to, to I, don't, I, 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 I think uh, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just not possible. Just tell me, where would P. Diddy be if Biggie was around? He would not be have his TV station. He would not have had that hit album with... Uh, Faith, he would not have another hit album after that, another hit album after that, a clothing line, a cologne, sunglasses, suits, on and on. Sean John, no. I, you know it and I know it. I, I just don't think um, that, that uh, I think that Sean went to uh, uh, Puffy, he went to Harvard, uh, something like that. I think he went to a great school. Um uh, and I don't think that I, uh, that that P Diddy would kill his golden goose. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why I think he would. Go ahead. <clears throat> he was scared to death that Shug was going to kill him. There's proof that a million was wired. There's proof. There, there's paperwork. You can't deny it. He wired a million over to California. If you get rid of Biggie. Yeah, that's your just like you're saying about Dre. If you get Tupac out of the way, Dre's on top. You get Easy E out of the way, okay? Eminem's your new golden goose. Diddy gets Biggie out of the way. 
Now, he may feel, okay, well, maybe Suge won't come try to fucking kill me. And number two, the guy in my way, my superstar, is now gone. So now I come in, make it, and he did make a great song with uh, Faith. I mean, that was a great song. Right. But that would have never happened if Biggie was alive. But I, I don't think that... Uh, he would be in the dust. Well, um, this is what... You know what he would be doing? Carrying what, Biggie's bag. Well, this is what Suge said. Suge said, if you solve one case, you solve both of them. Suge said that whoever killed Tupac killed Biggie. Suge's also a, a liar, it's, gangster, it's, nutcase. It's... it's uh, it's it's they've are the 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 detective for the Biggie case is going after Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. He's assured me that for Biggie, they want Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. Uh, Puffy is not mentioned. Uh, In your opinion, you really think he had nothing to do with killing Biggie or maybe not killing him but allowing it to happen no i i don't uh, because I, they don't they stretch found that one. they found they found the um according to um who uh who was it pool they found the ss malibu at at david max house Along with the uh Yeah, the crooked cop David Mac. Yeah, yeah. Along with the uh the uh German ammunition. They found all of that at the David Max house when they after he did the bank robbery. So uh the uh, there again, those are the people who were worked with Death Row. Uh and the people who worked with Death Row, whoever Suge had in his pocket, Dre had in his pocket. Um So I'm with you on that. I can buy into that, right? Like like you said, that the same, like Suge said, actually, mm -hmm. the same people that did one probably did the other, yeah. right? So you have the marksmen, and we know that they're dirty cops. I mean, yeah. that's been proven beyond belief. Because Biggie also now, if you pull up his car, he's also hit yeah. <clears throat> from outside the car. Yep. And there's no way that, you know, they say Poochie did that. They say Poochie killed Biggie. That's the word that uh, Poochie, and so that's why he's shot in the back, because he's allegedly he's the killer, and then he's killed on his motorcycle. But again, I agree with you on the marksman, one way or another. Especially after we see uh, yeah. when, once he finds the car. Uh, yeah, phew. Is that there? It? You, yeah, look on the right hand. See, right yeah. hand you side. See? Yep. You see? Yep. One, two, three. Uh, this is expert marksmen. Yep. Those the, the they almost in a row. That's what I'm saying. When you shoot, you're you're, you're just That's shooting. You're shooting. Like this is somebody who's clearly shooting a target. Yeah. And making it, you know, making it count. I mean, even if you're, God, I mean, not an expert marksman, but even if you know how to handle a gun, but you're driving by, cars bouncing around. You're just firing because you just want to kill somebody. So you're firing a window, firing here, firing there. You got shots going everywhere. Right. Yeah. This is where it's like. This is where like you're you're aiming, and you're firing, and you know what you're doing. You know exactly. Where this you're is going. an expert. Yeah. And the only people who can be an expert like th that that were in the, in the click at that time was law enforcement. And so you still you still have the the uh, I I just don't believe. I I know for a fact that Detective Dupree is not going after Big after Puffy. He's going after Dr. Dre and Ice Cube for Biggie. That's the this is the case file that my name is was initially put in. It was put in the Biggie case file uh, because when I first called Las Vegas in 2016, uh, Detective <laughs> Long was like, "You call me with that stuff, and I would get me and click." <laughs> yeah, enough of it, huh? Yeah, you didn't want to hear it. I say, Dr. Dre, click. And uh, so then, uh, then they uh, they tried to hit me. And once I went in, I went to custody, and I learned how to talk to the police while I was in custody. And when I came home, I got to the lieutenant, and I got my name in his homicide file. 
So and it, and it's him and his homicide file. They're going after Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. I just Puffy. If Puffy had has something to do with this, they would have had him in jail a long time ago. The detectives are not stupid. So what are you going to tell me? He didn't have that gun with Jennifer Lopez either that he put on uh, Shine and then didn't do shit for him and let him rot. And when he got out, didn't help him. I I don't I don't yeah. know about all of that. Yeah. All I know is well, you need to know about that so you can have a better opinion if he was involved in this shit. With this, because this right here, it 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 it, it, it the same people who killed Tupac and Biggie are bothering me. I I agree with you that I mean no, Rob. I mean those are fucking good shots, man. That's what I'm saying. You're, yeah, you're firing. You're you 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 you're, you're sharp. You you're an expert. That's all. Look look how. That's like in a row. Yeah. In a row, and, and, and they didn't miss. You know what's getting me on that picture? Look at that seatbelt buckle. That's a perfect shot for Biggie. Which, yeah. Like, he's, you know, he's a heavier guy. Yeah. yeah. Right now. You hit him right there. You know, with all that weight, the bullet's probably going to, if it's a hollow point, it's going to travel all over. Yeah. And, and you're that, not going to live through that. That went right through him. Right through him. And then you got, and then they made sure with the mm -hmm. other three. It, it, see, it's it's it, it, it it's it, that's why they were able to fly above the radar. Rob, what do you think? You think it's the same people? What's your opinion? We're all men. I, this is what see. This is what this is how things should be, yeah. right? But, like with the, this politic bullshit. You got some more coffee? Yeah, sure. I think the I think the biggest, in my opinion, there's. I, I know you're saying. Is that empty? I know you're saying Doctor Dre, and you're saying. Um, you're saying uh, Ice Cube, Is that but I oh, think I think it would be Suge is the main. I just think he's the focal point of all this, in my opinion. I always thought it was Suge. I think he's. I'm not saying he's the mastermind, but he's the guy that's involved with both. And yeah, they had cops on their side. They had guys on their side, and I think I think Puffy is in it. I, I, it's hard to say that you're the you're the underscore you're the underscore to this guy you're like you said you're carrying the guy's bag you're the you know you get him out of the way you now get catapulted to stardom and everything you've ever wanted and it may not have been the same with Biggie maybe Biggie told him that man listen you're just you're just with me but I'm I'm the guy and I, to me I mean. I just think Suge is the main component of both of it. What about the marksman? What about the shooters? That we never looked yeah, at. Yeah, like look at the pictures. Like I just said, like I said earlier, I don't think Orlando Anderson. If could Orlando do that. Anderson, after drinking, and <laughs> he, he had to be drinking, right? Yeah, and and and, 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 and upset, and, and upset, and you're driving in a car, and somebody's flying. I'm pulling up alongside you, Tommy. If I'm gonna try to kill you, I'm just boop 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 boop. boop, boop. I'm just firing. So it's going to the window there, 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 there. I may have missed 20 shots, too, because I can't fucking hit the car as we're going. Those are like, do 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 And out. So it's ba basically like the gun was pulled, boom, 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 out, done. We probably got them, but we're getting out here, too, now. But we, we got them because we know where we aimed. Same with that one. Look at the, look at the. Look at the biggie one. It's yeah. boom, boom, boom. Now, one was low, right? Yeah, That's and, and, they, and see, they said it was the SS Impala. And they find that at David Mack's house, according to uh, City Alive. Remember, David Mack was the one of the dirty cops. Yeah, yeah. He he robbed the bank. He's the one who who robbed the bank. So they find the SS at his house, and again, you 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 have the uh, you now have the you, death row connection. Now, do you think going back to your Dr. Dre theory, going back to Ice Cube? Do you think, and I asked you this about anyone else knowing about this, do you think Snoop knows anything? Well, um, the detective said that Snoop had nothing to do with it. That's fine, nothing to do with it, but do you think he knows something? Uh, I would uh, find it uh, for hard, not for him hard not to, not to know to something. Know, uh, that that uh, Dre and Cube were responsible but uh detective dupree said uh, i was i asked him so i could be ready for you know the show so that i know 
uh, what I'm talking about, and he said that uh, Snoop had nothing to do with it. So uh, the only thing Snoop did uh, was what I noticed early on is that Snoop said, I know who killed him, and he blamed Suge right away. So he sends the investigation in Suge's uh, direction. He says, I know who killed him, the man who was sitting beside him. And so, uh, but uh, Detective Dupree said that Suge had, uh, that Snoop had nothing to do with it. That he's, uh, and I'm glad. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I don't think it had anything to do with it, but I think he knows. Yeah, he knows. But I, I'm glad that he's not uh, involved. And even even toward the end, right before Tupac died, if you remember, uh, Snoop was kind of starting to move away from all that battle. And, you know, they did All Eyes on Me. They did Two of America's Most Wanted. And then after that, you know, they went on the, the One Awards show and they did the thing. But probably the last six months, Tupac was alive, maybe even a year. I didn't notice... I noticed that Snoop had really calmed down a lot. He wasn't really getting involved. Like, he wasn't on the tracks when he was hitting, you know, Mob Deep and everybody else. Uh, you know, yeah, Tupac. Uh, he he wasn't he, involved in all that. All that when he was spitting all that. that <clears throat> yeah, you that could fire. see that Snoop was kind of staying out of all of it. Mm. And then when this did happen, he went over with Master P. Yeah. Like uh, a, kind of like a safe area at the yeah, moment. Yeah. Well, <laughs> smart Snoop, move. <laughs> Snoop was riding around when this thing happened. When they started, when they killed Tupac and they killed Biggie, Snoop went out and bought an armored car, man. Yeah, that's S- good. Snoop was riding around in an armored car. Smart man. And and law enforcement told him you can't do that. Well, <laughs> Since why not? You can't, you can't ride around in an armored car. So Snoop was. Uh, Is that actually illegal? Huh? You can't ride around in an armored car? I guess it's, you know, you can't have something that, you know. Oh, there's only an East Coast, West Coast, or whatever (laughs) type of war you (laughs) want. Guys are dropping left and right. (laughs) What do you want me to do? You know, 20 guys that were in a car in in Vegas are dead. Yeah. You know, another 10 in in Cali are dead. You know, no, Snoop. You weren't a part of it for 10 years. You can't have an armored car. (laughs) Has anyone, though, like, really going back to this again, looking at the vehicle there, looking at, you know, the, the shots as we saw looking at the let me see if I have the big Tupac one up there looking at the shots here right mm-hmm. I'm not a police officer I'm, I'm you know I don't know but was this brought up at all like look at how perfectly aligned these shots are I mean has anyone really talked about this I haven't heard it myself well have they brought this, this, this up? This is the first time we I've heard about it yeah. and really looked we're, at it we're because of you. We're the first ones looking at it like this. Yeah. Because everybody just uh, just uh, threw it off on Suge, uh, threw it off as would never be solved. Uh, and then after I did my thing on the, the 2016 blog, then they blamed the Lando, trying to get it, hurry up and get it closed. This, somebody knows we did this. We better close this case. See, that's what that was. Everybody on the planet thought Orlando. Yeah, well, see, they once they found out that somebody knew that they did it, they said, we have to close this case. So, or else we're going to get in trouble because, uh, you know, I guess, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of, of Ice Cube's movies. But I'm also a fan of having what I deserve in this sure. lifetime, you know. And I coined the phrase 24-7. Uh, I, I, I give you guys beat making. Hey, man, I, I got my talent. I want to eat, too. You know, I, I want to be able to. Having talent shouldn't be a crime. And it shouldn't. You ought to be. Your gift should make room for you. But again, back to P. Diddy. Why does he wire a million dollars? I I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen that. If that that's something that's out there, but this is Detective Dupree, who's the lead detective on the Biggie case. He has not mentioned P Diddy to me, uh, as far as uh, who he's going after. Uh, Go back to that uh, Tupac picture and see if you can find a better picture of where the shots were, because I think they're per- they're almost. They're almost identical I to think, both cars. To both cars, yeah, when you yeah. Because they, they they want they want they want the kill shot. I I me myself, I was wondering was Kevin Gaines the shooter. 
you know, when you said uh, David Mack, I was thinking, because <clears throat> you know why I was thinking that too? Because Mack kind of seemed more of a loose cannon, where Gain, Gaines, from what I read and, you know, all that, all that he seemed more, how do you want to say it, maybe responsible in a way, precise, or, or precise mature, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but we do know, uh, because of City of Lies, that that David Mack was the spotter on the walkie-talkie. Remember? Yeah. In City of Lies, That's right. we we see we we see David Mack, but we don't see Kevin Gaines. No. And we don't see Rafael Perez, but we see uh, D- uh, David Mack as the spotter. I think I think I you're a, right. I got a random question, and I don't know the answer to this. So, looking at this picture I pulled up, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. When whoever shot, right? Whoever fired the shots, whoever we're saying, look, did this, look at how how did 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 they fire through the glass, too, or they're just firing into the car door? Well, I think the window was down. The window was down. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. So I, yeah, it was down. I've never shot anybody before, <laughs> but <laughs> if the window's down, why am I not just shooting them right in the fucking head or firing at them through the window? Why? Why am I doing this? Oh, because those are those are uh, kill shots. It, you you shooting at a bigger target, opposed to shooting at a it's smaller like a, target. You can move the, your head too. Your head. head the head is a smaller target. Uh, he's shooting at the body. That and can't move either. That's the, stuck in the seat. The, up, but my head yeah, can move. Vital organs. Yeah, my head can move. Yeah. I can. I can duck. I can. I can move yeah. around and get down. And but yeah. my, my body's staying. In you might spot. miss. The head is a smaller target. You might miss that. But he's shooting at the body. Right. Because if say he bends down. Yeah, he can <clears throat> say Pac. Yeah. Say say just by chance he's looking in the rear view and he sees this car creeping up. Get down. Get it's down. It's not like down. he's a stranger to this. Yeah. He gets down. Because from what I hear, Pac That's was trying to question. crawl into the back seat. I mean, yeah. When the shooting started, I, from what I heard, he was trying to crawl into the back seat. Well, are those gun- are those bullet holes in the back the yeah. back door there? Yeah, right. Yeah. It's all in a row. Well, I mean, there's lo- there's a low one, right? We can say there's two, There's but they're pretty much in the same general area. Yeah, they're all going to strike vital organs, yeah. you know. And when I first started investigating this thing, it said the cops killed Tupac and Biggie, and I was like, why in the world would the cops kill Tupac and Biggie money. except for money? Now go to the uh, Biggie shot. See that? See if you can find a better one on that one, because that's a good. I mean, that's a good comparison. I, I've never seen this, yeah, I, and I was. A, I mean, they, as a fan, I was digging. They, <laughs> they're, they're like, they these shots are like right on the right there. Yeah, see, oh, look at that. Shit. Look at that! One, two, three! Look at that! Look, yep. look how, whoa, whoa. look how precise that is! Yeah, no way in hell! Well, See, yeah. that's an expert. That's an expert. And, and and the only the only people who were around to be experts at that time were the police. So the theory that the police killed him is correct. Now go back to Tupac. The, the theory that the police is the shooter is correct. Look, one, two, three, four. Go back to the other one. Yeah, it's still the same. Damn, that's close. That's close, Rob. Yeah, they did. All, they just shot just enough, and they and when they was done, it's over. They these are kill shots. They hit vital organs. Wow. They didn't survive that. Uh, the the, the, the it, Ice Cube. That's why Ice Cube said you have to see who wanted to take their place, who wanted them out the way. He said that it wasn't East Coast, West Coast. He said there was some kind of hit. Uh, he says it uh, twice. Uh, go back to my my video. My uh, my YouTube channel. Go to my 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 channel again. Okay, go go right there. Ice Cube reveals the truth. This is this is the first one that let me know that he knew what happened. Understand, this is Cube, not Cal. So exactly, that's exactly dip. who I want. Might that's be a little different. <laughs> who I killed? might turn in the head on that. <laughs> <laughs> who killed Tupac and Biggie? And I think both of these dudes were assassinated in some kind of way. More Biggie than Tupac. I think Tupac might have uh, got killed by a dude that they that they you know had an incident with earlier that day. But Biggie's is seems a little yeah, yeah, government. Okay. <laughs> so you see? Yeah. You see, he can't even remember the lie 
that you and I can discuss. Now, you and I can discuss Orlando Anderson like like water. Right. Okay. We we know the lie, but he can't remember it. So he just jumps right to that me. that guy that he uh that they uh that they uh that they uh he's trying his best to remember the lie that we've been taught. And then he goes right to Biggie because that he can But he knows the truth, so he says the first thing that comes out of his mouth is these guys were assassinated in some kind of way. Then he tries to clean it up, but he can't remember the lie. See? So, and that was the first hint that I, when I I started researching, I said, here he is again. This is the guy. You did this, you know? And, and, let me say this. The sovereign of the Tupac and Biggie case is prophetic. This is a prophetic thing that I've done. Uh, they are God, they have gotten the attention of God. Ice Cube and Dr. Dre have gotten God's attention. I'm a preacher. I work for him. And I speak for him. He's extremely irritated with them. They've been playing God. So he's decided, I'm going to show up and I'm going to show you who God really is. You see, it's... Then tell me, right, with that being said, so then tell me, how Ice Cube, Dr. Dre plan out the California killing of Biggie because <clears throat> you got to get Biggie to California. Well, once you came here, that was it. But it's, but it's, only a moron would go to California if if P Diddy didn't know anything. Yeah, I mean. Well, let's let's uh, first let's say if let's, okay, let's let's say you're right and P. Diddy had nothing to do with it, then he is the dumbest guy on the planet to go to California six months ahead. Well, it's the same thing. Um, this is your biggest rapper. Well, he didn't think, they didn't think that, they know they hadn't done nothing wrong. Who? Biggie. Okay. He, he knows he he knows I've done nothing. But it doesn't matter. The but, people in Ca- the people in California think he did. They think either Biggie did it, Biggie had somebody do it, P Diddy did it. You well, know that. He, At that time everybody thought he, Bad Boy did it. He has but he ha- they have a clear conscience. No. And when no. you have a clear conscience, you you move differently and I wouldn't dare I wish I had the paper. I I had the transcript. I wouldn't I wouldn't dare blame uh, the dead for being murdered. I'm Uh, not blaming the dead. I'm blaming did. Do you you have a right to come here or to come to California? They had a right to come to California and and then return home safely. No, that's stupid, Ivan. Well, it's that's a stupid move. We can't. See, we can't. Okay, Ivan, you run Bad Boy. Your biggest rapper is me. I was just in a massive battle with Tupac, who mm. just got gunned down. Everybody thinks that your biggest rapper, the biggest guy you have on your label, had something to do with it, or you had something to do with it. You mean to tell me you're going to go to California six months later because you've got a clear conscience? It, it, when the entire state of California thinks... That bad boy killed Tupac, their boy. That, Come on, don't that, even sit there and try to. Say I don't that even to me, think. I, I don't even think uh, that at that time anybody was thinking uh, that they were involved. At that time, the what? investigation was going. At that time, Ivan, Ivan, Ivan nobody, come on. You nobody can't thought, sit here and say that. Really? To no, nobody, you can't. The investigation was going at that time. The, uh, Ivan, you're going to sit here and tell me that California, six months after Tupac got killed, you're going to tell me that all those Tupac fans, all I those didn't think death row fans. had nothing to do with it. Not you. I'm saying all the fans, all those people. You may not have, but you mean to tell me that 
a large majority didn't think that Bad Boy, not necessarily Biggie, just Bad Boy, didn't have anything to do with that. Uh, I, and it would be safe to bring your top artist six months later. Well, it ain't. It ain't because of your conscience. That's just a stupid it, comment, Ivan. It ain't. It ain't safe to go nowhere. Period. Not after uh, a West Coast East Coast it, it, war and somebody just got well, killed. We just had another rapper uh, Total, killed in Los Angeles the other day. You're talking PB about night and day. PB and Rock, but Biggie. The only thing I could say is Detective Dupree is not going after Puffy. I understand that, but I, I'm saying between so, me and you. I, I can't, why would I blame Puffy for something the police ain't blaming him? So if the police ain't blaming him, I'm not, I'm not going, my thing ain't on speculation. I ain't speculating. Because the police say it? No, I ain't speculating. The police report, they going after Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. Dr. Dre and Ice Cube are responsible for the murders of Tupac Shakur and Christopher Wallace. That might be so, but I don't know how you can sit across from me and tell me that Diddy had nothing to do with it. Uh, it, it the, uh, unless they arrest him, when they arrest him, if they arrest him, then I'll believe it. So you think he just went to Cali because they had a clear conscience? And so, you know, it's, I, you got me on the Tupac one because those shots are perfect. You got me on the shots with Biggie. But come on, Ivan. It, a it, clear conscience? It, I, I yeah. wouldn't. <laughs> I don't think Puffy set his artist up. Why would you come all the way to California to set him up? You could have did it in New York. No, you don't do it in New York. You do it in California nah. because then, then nah. you could blame the other Do you ones. blame California? Nah. You don't do it in New York. That would ju- that would be even dumber. No, nah, I, I don't. I don't. Puffy. Ivan, I can't Puffy. believe you're a smart guy. I can't believe nah. it. It's only it's only two people. The same people who, who are hindering my music career are responsible for the murders of Tupac Shakur and Christopher Wallace. It's only, it's only, it's Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. They, they, they got their hands on something and they had a chance. They, how they got away with it for so long. Hey, those are the only two people. I don't disagree. That was never, that, yeah, that I, was never uh, investigated. Everybody else, Suge was investigated right away. Right away. Uh, Puffy was investigated, and they p- investigated Puffy because his, his really his name was Puffy. It was Puffy, and been, then after they, seventeen different names, yeah, after they <laughs> investigated Puffy, Puffy said, "I'm changing my name to P Diddy." Then Diddy, and what Diddy, the hell is he now it, today? Uh, Diddy, he, he, he's Diddy, Diddy again. It's Diddy. Diddy. It's Diddy. He's Diddy. See, he he changed his name after the investigation and the murders. And all of that, he wanted to distance himself from all of that. I'm sure he did. So he changed his name to P. Diddy. And we would, the law enforcement is not stupid. They investigated Suge and they investigated Puffy. Had either of those two men been responsible for either one of those murders, law enforcement would have detected it and they would have been gone already. The how can you say that? How can you say that? Because they were investigated. But they're crooked as hell. That that the entire both of those cases that were investigated was as crooked but, as crooked can be, and you know I, that from your research. But, but how can we? How can we? What makes Dr. Dre fly above the radar? He's no, no, I'm, white. No, I'm not saying that. You you made some very good points and proved some very. <laughs> good, I mean, look, 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 I mean, look. I, I'm not arguing with that. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I can't, uh, you know, if Detective Dupree uh, had told me that he was going after Puffy, then I'd tell you that. But I made sure I want to know from the lead detective in the case, who you going after? And so I made sure I, I checked on Snoop. They're not going after Snoop. They're not going after Puffy. They're not going after Suge. They're going after Dre and they're going after Cube. And everybody knows who did it. Nobody knows who did it. No. You're telling me. No, no. You don't know. Yeah. But when I say everybody, I mean in that. In that. That's in that, involved in this. In that in circle. That. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. They all know. hmm They all. Everybody knows Dre did that. Everybody knows Q so, did that. So what do you think then happens? You know, do you think being a godly man and talk, you know, saying about, you know, god that you know the light you know the darkness the light there's always the light that comes out of the darkness Mm -hmm. god knows this happened right right is god gonna 
come down and say, here it is. Here they are, and it's going to happen. Well, while they're alive. While well, they're yeah. Alive. Well, the detectives are working on it. And so. What's your I, prediction, though? Do you think it's going to happen? I think, I think that they are going to. The more exposure mm-hmm. it gets, that they are responsible. Uh, when the people cry, they will act. Um. Uh, you can't just Dr. Dre's worth what five hundred million. Uh, Ice Cube is worth one hundred and sixty million. What's P Diddy worth? Over uh, a billion. Uh, P Diddy, he just now became worth a billion. <clears throat> Kanye got kicked. <laughs> yeah. <his> yeah. <laughs> so, Kanye, so, so up, do you, you really up. want to go after a billionaire? So, so it's hard. You don't go after. It's hard to go after guys like that. Right? Like Dre's hard enough with his five hundred million. Yeah. Now, if I'm gonna narrow it down and pick two. I'm going to take Ice Cube and Dre because otherwise I'm going against a billionaire but Kanye, that can get lawyers beyond any but, lawyer that they could but, ever imagine. But when 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 uh, when these murders happen, uh, Puffy wasn't a billionaire. He just he just hit that status after. Yeah. After uh, Kanye got booted. Well, he was on his way there the second Biggie got killed. Well, I don't, you know, I don't. What know. do you mean you don't know? I, I, I don't, I don't. I'm not going to blame Puffy. Okay, let's just say this. Because I, I, I know. How much do you think he made off that Faith Evans song? I don't know. A, lot. a shit they, ton. They, they, they all made a ton of money. I ain't made none yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, me shit. neither. And we're trying to figure it out. Yeah. They all, they, I'm the real beat maker out the West. <laughs> Everybody that made a ton of money, I ain't made none yet. So, yeah. you know, and I ain't hating on nobody. I'm just saying, let me get mine. You know and I'm I saying? had the in, and we pulled up them cars, and those are those are some hell of a shot. So where's our money, too? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, I, I ain't, you know, all that other stuff, my name is Wes. I ain't, in, I ain't in that mess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to let everybody know. I coined the phrase 24-7. I got my record label. Hey, I'm just trying to get paid like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to eat. But I would have never uh, did try to do this uh, if they hadn't hindered my life and also tried to kill me. Uh, you had Sammy the Bull on here, right? No. He wasn't on here? No, he, he was on uh, Patrick McDavid. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, he's down the street. Okay, so I saw Sammy the Bull on one of his shows, on a show. and But Sammy the Bull, he, he'll he let you know, he let us know when it's, when it's right to go to law enforcement and turn in somebody. Uh, John Gotti tried to hit him. And Sammy the Bull said, okay. I'm not finna waste my time trying to hit you. I'm gonna be where you are. So he went to law enforcement, and he turned on John Gotti. Am I right or wrong? You're right. So once somebody tries to kill you, you have the right to turn them into law enforcement. If you don't, you're a fool. If somebody tried to kill you, you don't turn them into law enforcement, you're a fool, because you can't go and try to kill them, then you'll wind up in jail. So you have to do what Sammy the Bull did. And he lets us know he's a real gangster now. He's Sammy the Bull, a real gangster. And and uh, he let us know if somebody tried to kill you, you do what I did. I turned in John Gotti. You do the same thing. It's still gangster because you it's self defense. And I want to say that too because killing people isn't gangster. It's weak. Yeah, it's 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 a very weak thing. And maybe they got it wrong. But if you really look at the Godfather. Uh, uh, he says that we're not murderers despite of what this guy thinks. And when uh, Michael hit all of the heads of the families, that was self-defense. Yeah. That was self-defense. They was getting ready to hit Mike. Exactly. And so Mike struck first. That was self-defense. And... I'm saying that because I noticed uh, uh, all of the killing of all of these entertainers, the mob would have cut your toes off if you touch one hair of Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> Frank Sinatra. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, Frank Sinatra. We know Frank, that. Uh, am I right or wrong? You're absolutely right. Huh? You don't touch Frank. No, you don't it, touch Frank Sinatra. Believe me. 
I know for a fact, if you would have even flickered Frank Sinatra, you wouldn't have a hand anymore. You wouldn't have a hand no more. No. No. You don't touch Frank Sinatra. You don't touch Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, Dean Martin. Was Dean Martin? Dean Martin. Yeah. Dean Martin. You don't touch them. You don't kill entertainers. James Brown. Yeah. The Italians love yeah. James yeah. Brown, boy. You, don't, you wouldn't even believe it. You, see, w- you guys got to listen to this. You want my friends in South Philly. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't believe it. Just imagine a, everybody's at a bar, and it's all Italian people. James Brown comes on. They stop. The heaviest Italian guy who just ate 10 pounds of pasta, he gets off his chair. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, and these guys don't get up for anything. Yeah. The, the James, it was something with James Brown. Yeah. They had gotten a, a, a jukebox thing, mm-hmm. and they thought it was the coolest thing in the world. James Brown, boom. Yeah. Well, see, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. See, the entertainment, you don't. See, you can't run the entertainment industry like the drug game. And somebody encroaches on your corner, and you say, get off my corner, they don't leave, and you pop them. You can't do that with the entertainment industry. Uh, The entertainment industry always has to be the pimp game. You can pimp whoever you want, but you can't go around killing every woman because she's got a vagina. (laughs) (laughs) Good point. Good point. So you 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 know God's gonna always give birth to talent, and you can't go around killing people because they, God has given them talent. So the music industry cannot be ran like the drug game. It has to be. It can't be some gangster thing where we kill entertainers. It has to be the pimp game, because otherwise you will always be in a position to where you find a need to get rid of God's creation. So if we're gonna do anything in the music industry, we've got to pimp talent. We can't kill talent. The mob pimped Sammy Davis Jr. They pimped Dean Martin. They pimped Frank Sinatra. They was always there. They pimped Elvis. They was always there. You don't kill Entertainers. (laughs) (laughs) Entertainers. <laughs> <laughs> you don't kill entertainers. Yeah. Because killing is not entertainment unless it's on a fake movie. But in real real blood and gore in real life is not entertainment. And so we we, we, we have to be careful and we have to get back to being the Barry Gordy. The greatest men of the Motown era is not Marvin Gaye. We had Larry Johnson in. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. had you had yeah, Larry. Larry in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was yeah. a real nice guy. Yeah. Real but, nice and, guy. And and the but the greatest men from that era is Barry Gordy and Smokey Robinson. Smokey Robinson. See, you, you're the more people you help, the greater you are, and they have outlived many of their artists, even the youngest. Michael Jackson, they're still here because they followed what God said, and when you've been blessed, you ought to do what? Be a blessing to others, and so they did that, and I think that people are missing the mark in today's generation. They're not paying it forward. Yeah, they're not, they, you know, they're not paying it forward. They're, rappers are being murdered on a regular basis, and that is something that you don't do. If you're a real gangster, you don't kill entertainment, you pimp it. Make money from it. Yeah, you make money off of it. That's what pimp, if you, you suppose, we're supposed to be pimps, not killers. Yeah, because you're trying to make money. You're trying to make money. money. (laughs) That's why I still say P. Diddy was heavily involved because he wanted (laughs) money. (laughs) I'm not going to hate. I know, I know. I'm not going to hate on Puppy. Hey, we agree to disagree. Yeah, we we'll we'll agree to disagree. When God comes down, believe me, his ass is coming with him. Puffy, I I believe you're innocent. (laughs) Now, if if Dr. Dre is sitting where Tommy's sitting right now, what do you say to him face to face right now? (laughs) <laughs> if Dr. Dre sitting right across from me, man, pay me, man, <laughs> man, what you doing, man? You messing up our spirituality, man. Uh, music is spiritual. Uh, when David, when Saul was possessed with a demon, 
David played the harp and chased the demon out of Saul. This is what you would say to Dr. Dre. Yeah. I'd say, hey, music is medicine. And we should always have more than one doctor in the house when it comes to distributing medicine. It should not just be one thing. You don't have to be greedy and do it all. You know, share. Freely you receive, freely you give. Greatness is a legacy. People think a legacy is what you do for yourself. A legacy is how many children you have. All right, I can tell your lawyer to send me a, a letter. It's time for me to, <laughs> I, I'm out of here. That's <laughs> how long that will last, Ivan. <laughs> you better get right to the point and say, look, give me my money. Yeah. Now. But, yeah, yeah. But Now, now, now. Yeah, just pay me. Otherwise, I'm going to continue with my boy, uh, I'm sorry, Dupree, right? Yeah. Dupree. And one of these days, you're going to get a knock that you don't like. Well, you know what? I wouldn't, at this point. <laughs> Something like that. I wouldn't be doing that other shit. I'd be right to the point. At this point, I wouldn't, uh, I would just say, just give me my name. Yeah. Give me my name. Keep your money. Keep your money. Give me my name. Give me my name. Let me, let me work. Let me break my back and work with my hands and earn a living for myself. And Keep if your I, money. And if I'm Dre, I say, you take that thing down about my about uh, yeah, what yeah, I correct. did, Craig, I'll and I'll tell you what, I'll give you your name. <laughs> You'd have to wheel and deal. Well, you know what? It's too late now. It's oh, it, yeah, Law yeah. enforcement already know that he did it. Uh, and uh, He don't need to know that. You're what, just trying what, to get your name. No, nah, I'm not going to play nah, with it. But it's, it's too late now. Law enforcement knows that he did it. I wish, this is a sad day, as I said earlier, that he's a hero. Uh, this is not a great day that I have to tell the world that Dr. Dre and Ice Cube are responsible for killing two of our greatest artists because we consider them to be two of our greatest artists. So it's, 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 it's nobody wins. It's a, it's a lose. It's a loss for our community. It's, uh, you know, it's painful. Um, How about, and you should also say, hey, you know that deal that you got with Beats that Apple bought from you? Oh, yeah. I'll take about 5% of that, pal. 1%. I'll take 1%. 1%. How much did he get? He got a lot. Uh, that's what, that's, what, that's made what made him a billionaire. Him, yeah. That's what made him a billionaire is when he sold. Uh, yeah. It was the streaming platform that he sold now. A lot of people think it's the headphones. That's what I thought. No, nah, it's the streaming platform. Which one? The Beats. He had a Beats streaming platform. Oh, I didn't even know. Yeah, he had a streaming platform, and Apple didn't have a streaming platform at the time. They only had the download site. And so they purchased the uh, Beats Electronics, to, and the streaming platform came along uh, with that. And he, he, the, the guy made some great business moves. You're right. You could only download before. Yeah. Huh. The guy yeah. made some great business moves. But when you put murder on your resume, that's just, you know, how do you sleep at night, you know? And, and there's always a... It, you know, th there's only been one person uh, in history who actually got away with murder, and that was Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper, yeah. He got away. <laughs> what, what, about, what about OJ? <laughs> what, what about OJ? <laughs> no, OJ's innocent. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, um, the the no. glove don't fit. No, it, 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 it was uh, the Casanova killer. Look it up. Uh, Google Glenn, Glenn Rogers. You know, I thought it, really, I, I thought maybe... If he was innocent, if he was, if he wasn't, he cracks me up. So, I mean, I, I, he, OJ's funny to me. He was innocent, but now I'm wondering if the blonde haired person that the maid saw him talking to was this guy. This is the, that's who killed Nicole. Why do you think that? He slept with her. She slept with him. Hmm. His, his car was in front of her, her, was seen in front of her house. And his brother says that he told him about Nicole. Wow. He is an American serial See, killer. he considered a possible alternative suspect to OJ. Yeah. See? See, he did it. This is, this is the killer. And he went on from uh, uh, California to kill other women. He killed a couple other women. He killed her next-door neighbor. 
And then she slept with him after the next door neighbor was already dead and she didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> and then so she gets him out of the house according to the movie that i seen and then uh he comes back but at what point if if you're a serial killer right mm -hmm. he's killed all these people he's what's his he's life in prison i'm sure yeah why not just say you fucking killed her what's he did matter? oh he did yeah yeah he, he admits it it's admitted oh, his man. brother his brother says that he did it he says that he that he oh, did it okay. and uh um, and he slept with her, and he goes back. He missed her because she set off the alarm or something, according to the movie. And then he goes back, and he's the one who kills Ron Goldman and Nicole. But see, see I thought maybe it was Ron, not Ron Goldman. I thought maybe it was the guy that uh, OJ was. Who was uh, the, the gardener? Uh, uh, the blonde hair the white guy. Guy, The white blonde hair guy. Oh, yeah. you talking about the, uh, <laughs> the Fuck. Uh, that one Kato, who lived. Kato, Kato Kalen. Kato Kalen. That's who lived in I the back. I thought if it wasn't OJ, it was him. No. See, and but see the, the long blonde hair? Yeah. And the 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 maid said she saw OJ talking to somebody with blonde hair standing next to the limousine. So maybe he told him. To so kill. I'm thinking that OJ told this him is to the kill. guy and he, I pay you what I here's your money. And then he goes back over there, and maybe OJ didn't say you to do it, but because he's a serial killer, he did it. Like, like here's the money. You know what to do. No, nah, because he painted her house. See, he he um, he did some construction work on Nicole's condo, and so I believe OJ paid him for the construction work. And he's maybe a little bit more than that too. Maybe a little bit of tip at the end. I don't know. I, <laughs> yeah. I, that part I don't know. But he he sure said Charlie wow. got it. He OJ says Charlie did it. Rob, go to uh, Google.com. Yep. Don't do it through Brave. Uh, like do it in Brave, but Google and type in uh, Glenn Edwards admits to killing uh, Nicole. You know, and Ivan, <clears throat> you're you're bringing these things up that we can clearly see, right? The Dre with the shot. The marksman, perfect shot. I mean, perfect oh, yeah, shot on both cars. You never hear of it. Now, I haven't heard of it. No, you're expert. To, yeah. to do that, you're expert. But I'm saying, like, all this stuff, nobody's heard of. Nobody's seen. I mean, you have, but the general public has not seen any of it. No, that's, they haven't looked at it. Uh, we've, we've never had a really detailed look into the investigation. We just have a lot of speculation. Read that, Rob. Rob, Rob is pretty good. Did serial killer Glenn Rogers help kill Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman in 1994? That's the conclusion of My Brother the Serial Killer, a two-hour documentary premiering Wednesday. Um, I'm absolutely certain my brother killed Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman, says Glenn's brother, Clay Rogers. Um, made headlines nationwide when he was captured in 95, driving Cribs' car around after a murder. Blah, 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 blah. He killed 70 people. Glenn told me he was on parting. Oh, Glenn told me when he called, guess who I'm parting with, Nicole Simpson. Actually, what he told me was they've got money, they're well off, and I'm taking her down. So, yeah, I didn't know about that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See, so hey, I've been, I've been, you, you be, I've been bringing in some good uh, stuff. Yeah. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey br I've been bringing the heat. I He's like bringing it. the heat. <laughs> and we're, we're even, and then we're, we're, we're fact checking it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not being a dick, you know. We're just. Yeah. You I want to know. Yeah. You got to check. You got to check. It's not check. that I don't believe you. I just want to know. Because see, I didn't know either, and I'm in the actual O.J. Simpson story. I'm in the movie. Uh, the really? One that showed on television. Yeah. At the end. Congratulations. They have people come in. And they have me come in and they ask me, why do you think OJ got off? Yada, yada, yeah. yada. And I, at that time, I thought he was guilty. I said, <laughs> I, I said he, he got off because uh, so many blacks been hung before for doing nothing. Everybody just glad to see him get off. Yeah. But if then, they don't fit, you must have quit. But then later on, I was at home one night and uh, I saw the movie, the Nicole movie. And I'm like, oh, shit. It's, it's, this is who killed her, and so I I did I googled everything just like you did, and uh and so. But I then you say, well, do they say that to make money off the movie? Nah, because uh, even the police say that his car was there, his oh, truck yeah, was yeah. there, and he had contact with her. So you have to blame him first. That's why you know uh, there was Mark Furman framed OJ. 
it, it, that really was a frame up. The uh, the blood drops, uh, the way you found him, the blood on the sock, they framed him, and that's why he got off. If it wasn't for Mark Furman uh, taking the fifth and doing all of that, he probably wouldn't have got off. I got one question. Why is it always serial killers are crazy white dudes? Honest to God. Every serial killer is a crazy white They're not. Man. The only one I can remember no. is the black guy on the bridge with his kid. They're not. Uh, there's, there's some black guys. There's I've never some, seen it. That's always a crazy white dude. Yeah, there, there. Uh, there's, Jesus, there's a, there was a guy in uh, in one city who would uh, kidnap prostitutes in his house. Uh, then we had the the, uh, the remember sleep, the bridge, the grim, the grim sleeper. Remember uh, uh, grim. Detective oh, Dupree? Yeah. He was the lead detective on the Grim Sleeper Task Force. We had him. He was the African American. And then we got oh. Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. We don't know how many they killed. And remember remember the guy on the bridge? He was actually bringing his son with him, this sick guy. Oh, you're talking about the uh, uh, oh, Golden, Gate, Golden Gate killer, that one? Uh, no, I think he's talking about Mal. I think you're talking about... The, I don't know his name. I just the, He was an African-American, and he was bringing his son with him, and they were just going up on sniping. any bridge and just... The other thing that always amazes me is, like, how is a serial killer... I know they're not all there or whatever, but, like, how do you kill that many people? Like, the 70, it said, or whatever that one was. And I've heard... I watched a, on Netflix the other day. It's called The Good Nurse. It's about a guy who was a nurse. It was in Pennsylvania, a couple of our hospitals, and he would inject insulin into the IV bags. Oh, yeah. He'd be killing people. They think he killed over 400 people over all the years. Yeah, like, I, I saw that. fuck do you get away with that for yeah. that long? Yeah. Like, man. I don't know. Well, the, these guys, you, you know, you're talking about high. Yeah. yeah. You know, people who... Who who do that stuff is because they get a high that you won't believe. That's an adrenaline rush to them. And but how they get away with it that many? It's 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 uh, law enforcement is you know yeah. doesn't it, it it's hard. Some people it's hard to detect that uh, that they're doing it. Like the uh, the I five killer, it, he was seventy years old when they caught him. Mm -hmm. So that just lets you know, you know, not to do it, you know, because you, you know, you might get away with it today, but then when they get you, like the the Pac and Biggie case, those those are death penalty cases. Oh yeah. Those and how about how long the uh, who was the guy who was writing? I can't believe I can't remember his name. He was writing the letters to the law enforcement, like Star, like. Zodiac. 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 Yeah. Zodiac killer. He lasted a long time. Jeff yeah. And Jeffrey then he Dahmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, some of these guys, they he turned, he wanted, he was done. Well, well, For whatever, he wanted to know why he, he kept killing. I watched that whole thing. Yeah, John yeah. Gacy. that was good. You yeah. got John Gacy. That's another one of the clowns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and so you know, but but these guys, but what we've never had before, and what we don't ever want to experience again is wealthy serial killers. Yeah. So do you think then that Dr. Dre? Ice Cube are responsible for more than, in your opinion. Oh, yeah. They'd have to be because you had all of the cover-up murders. You got to take care of them. So you got you to gotta explain those. Uh, so, you know, you're looking at two men who are serial killers and are very wealthy. And the question is, is have they stopped? Do you think they have? Do hmm? you think they have? Uh, have? Have rappers stopped dying? Nope. So, you know, I mean, you, you're dealing with billionaire killers. What would a rich killer spend his money on? If you got rich at putting hits on people, you think he would stop? So between you and uh, Detective uh, Dupree, who congratulations to him for solving that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, what's his name? The Grim. The Grim Sleeper. Yeah. The Grim Sleeper. Congratulations. Uh, that, that That's that yeah, took that, that took work, dedication, and uh, you got to give a ton of respect to that man yeah, for that. Yeah. W w from beginning to end, they go to Cali, Diddy and Biggie. Mm -hmm. Between you and uh, Detective Dupree, what is your guys' analysis, opinion of exactly what happened? Well, I haven't talked to <clears throat> – the only thing I did – Or I should say, what is – 
yours. I give him a name. I, we, I haven't talked to him about what their personal investigation, but um, so P. Diddy decides he's going to go to. He's going to come to California. Yeah, take me from there as to what, what your research has told you. Opportunity, um, you know, if they knew he was coming, I don't know, uh, but it's opportunity. And when he got here, uh, they swung into motion and they were ready. According to uh, City of Lies, we have the spotter, we have the the Muslim, and we have Rafael Perez. And now the Muslim, they found him. Uh, they found Rafael Perez. He's allegedly a limo driver somewhere. The Muslim is back east somewhere. So they found them. So when they got here, obviously they had some type of plan so that when they, they knew he was coming. And when he got here, I think that voice uh, in the movie, there's a voice that comes in, phone call to Biggie, says, your fat ass ain't leaving L.A. Uh, I think that was... That, yeah. Which movie was that in? The S- City of Lies. City of Lies. Yeah. Well, well, the Biggie movie. No, Notorious. Notorious. Yeah. When he says before they kill him, he gets a phone call, and he's and the and the person, the voice says, "Your fat ass ain't leaving L.A." So you know, it's just jealousy, man. So you think P Diddy set him up, sent him to California? No. Nah. It was already set up. Nah. To have him killed? Nah, not P Diddy. I, I, I. I'm sorry. Not. I didn't mean to say P Diddy. They go to California. They, they get word. They already have it set up, yeah, ready to go because they know up. they know he's gonna be there. Did he forgot a piece of paper in the club so he couldn't be in the same car with Biggie as he usually is for some reason? So he goes back and gets his piece of paper. Biggie wants to go get laid, so he leaves. I mean, you can hear that on the the thing. Yeah. He wanted to chase that some girl down and yeah. did so, he had to go get his piece of paper yeah so i don't know <laughs> who who what 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 uh all i know is who's behind it is that you know the people behind this thing the financiers and the major benefactors of this thing is ice cube and dr dre get them out of the way uh, and dr dre became the greatest fraud in the music industry that you've ever seen, you know, Millie Vanilli ain't got nothing on. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Millie Vanilli? Well, I might, we might get, we might uh, get reach out, we might reach out and get him in. I'd like to talk to him. <laughs> Why yeah. not, right? Yeah, Millie Vanilli. Nobody's seen them in a minute. He yeah. went, he went and hid in a cave. <laughs> yeah, and, and, but it came out that they was fake. Yeah, and, and but Dr. Dre was allowed to be a fake. You know? I think P Diddy's the biggest faker in the world. Nah, you you know. Um, you know when it was uh it was it was the genius of Jay Z that wrote Steel Dre. Oh Jesus! It it was the genius of Scott Stark and Mailman. That Scott made Stark beat. was a beast. Those he's they made the beat. Uh, Dre he just somebody who got on the microphone and recited. I don't think there's anybody better than uh, Scott Storch. Even though he had his little issue, but man, is he Quick. when he's on, he's on. DJ, DJ Quick too. Yeah. DJ Quick. I met Quick. I met Quick uh, out at my friend's ranch house in uh, Rancho Texas, Cucamonga, Rancho uh, in Temecula, at his ranch house in Temecula. And DJ Quick is probably, DJ Quick is the all eyes on me uh, producer. So DJ Quick is probably one of the best producers out of the West. I, I think that, you know, he, 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 he's there. You know, you have to give him his props. I have to give Quick his props. I met Quick. We we had a chance to meet. So, you know, uh, Quick is, is a great dude. He's a great uh, beat maker out of the West. It was, it was uh, Quick, Battle Cat, and uh, those guys, Mailman. Those guys are really responsible for shaping the sound. Daz, you know. Daz, yeah. You know, those guys are, you know, they're tremendous. They, they, they don't even need the... They didn't even need the the violence that that uh, uh, to be great, you know. They were they would have been great anyway. It's really the violence is messing up their 
their legacy, just really for volumes. It's just tame. Because legacy is what, how the history books are going to see you. And I think the greatest legacy in the history of the music business is probably James Brown. Yeah, I, I don't know if you can argue with that. Yeah. At least one of them up there. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. He's because he, he, well, he, he, he starts with nothing and comes out with the funk. He inspires a whole generation of musicians. Then he gives us Bootsy, teaches Bootsy how to be on the one. And then Bootsy goes on, and then Bootsy gives us, We want easy. Everybody get up. We <laughs> want easy. Yep. So you see, you you see how the legacy goes. Yeah, you see it it it, it, it goes from James Brown all the way to Easy E. It's a great legacy, and he's his drummer is one of the most sampled drummers in the history of the of hip hop. So it's a great legacy of what you leave behind for others, you know. And and uh, so he's one of the greatest legacies. Of in the history of the music industry. Rob, can you pull up, I think it's tab six or seven, it's uh, copyright, and you can explain the, the copyright. You had to send it to me. It's uh, the, the, the whole form. The, the patent? <coughs> the patent, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So take us through this. Okay, uh, this this is, uh, you know, when you, when you want to make money on something, <laughs> yeah. you don't want to get robbed. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because Hollywood will rob you. Oh, we know that. Hollywood will rob oh, you boy. and leave you homeless and hungry. I mean, I, I could sit here with you for three hours just on people who have come in that Netflix, Amazon, you name it, has, you know, hey, we're going to give you $10 million. Mm -hmm. But they don't realize that that mansion that they rented for that hour, that was a million. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you owe them money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, that's, that's what Tupac stayed broke all the yeah. time. <laughs> but so. Yeah, the, you sell them more albums than anyone ever as a rapper on All Eyes on Me. Yeah. And you, you don't have any. You don't have you, any money. And nothing in your name. Nothing in your name. <laughs> uh, that car you got. Uh, that shooks. Yeah. Uh, we got to pay for that, you know. <laughs> but so to keep Hollywood from ripping me off. Blow this up a little bit, Rob. And so that nobody, uh, because they got a they got a they got a reward out now. I don't know what they put a reward out on this case for, and is uh, but they uh, reward. So if uh, nobody can say that they're responsible for giving uh, Dr. Dre making Dr. Dre and Ice Cube the suspects, I'm responsible for that. This is my invention. With law enforcement, I created the hip hop homicides of Tupac Amaru Shakur, uh, R. Tupac, and Christopher George Latour Wallace, aka, AKA Notorious B.I.G., Biggie Smalls, or simply Biggie, Saab by Ivan Law. The suspects are Andre Young, aka Dr. Dre, and O'Shea Jackson, aka Ice Cube. So I have a patent on it. So if anybody start making money on my invention. You ain't losing this time. No, no, I ain't losing this time. I'm going to get paid. <laughs> I'm going to get paid. I got the patent. So they nobody can say that they solved this case. And then when it says document, that those are the those five pages, and then the three there, two there, those yeah. are all patented. Yeah, those are the cover sheets, the the information that I sent in. But I actually joined the uh, the, uh, the the OS uh, TPO site uh, so that I can upgrade it. But, uh, you know, a patent is... You can always upgrade your patent. This is a provisional patent, patent pending, so that, you know, nobody can take credit for solving the case, you know. They can't, you know, take credit. If they're going to take credit for it, then they're going to have to give better suspects than Andre and Ice Cube. And I don't think you can get better suspects than Dr. Dre and Ice Cube. No, no. Go to uh, tab 11. It's uh, two over. Right there. Oh, where are you? Where are you? So go to over. I thought there was another one. Okay, now this is here. Now you're about you're in the process of turning this into a film, right? Yes. Okay. So take us through where you're at, what the status of it is. Uh I've got the um the treatment written. I had a very nice uh writer. Uh, uh, uh she who wrote the uh screenplay for me. 
I've submitted it to a couple of major networks. I won't say their names, you know, because uh, sure. they have to decide. Yeah, what, you don't want to do that. So I don't want to just put them on blast. No, because say one is is going to do it, and then you say another, it could hurt you. Yeah, so, no. so and so I, I it's out at a couple of major networks uh, to see what they want to do. So I'm waiting uh, to see what they want to do with the screenplay. But we do have the uh, movie out there. Uh, you know the the screenplay out there, uh, waiting for the uh, opportunity to get it out there to the public, and to let everybody know that the case is officially solved. It's it's official. It's not a speculation. It's you know I I'm not speculating. I'm not just hating on them guys now, because I actually I love them, but uh, I need mine. Well, congratulations for even getting on IMDb. Yeah, you know, not anybody can just hop up on there. You know what I mean? And congratulations on getting this shot. I mean, that that's that's something Thanks. to say. I yeah, I, I I kept researching. You know, uh, 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 I kept studying and googling and searching and trying to get the story out there. Make sure I own the story <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't slip away. <laughs> yeah. So I, every place I found that I could put it. I put it. If they didn't let me put it here, okay, they, you know, I can't put it here, okay, but I put it here. So I have quite a few uh, 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 certified news sites like uh, Medium News. They let me ha put it there. Uh, I have um, Reddit News. Uh, they, I have a page there. Yeah, I saw it on the R. <clears throat> yeah. And if people don't know what the R is, that means you got enough car. That means you're in populate population basically right you yeah know, you're not in a holding cell anymore no no <laughs> you, you, you're out there you're so, out there yeah. so the story is getting out there now and then you know i'm here with you you know i'm here this is huge you know this is oh thank you thank you for this, coming in this is really interesting I and mean, we never looked at it like this nah, it's, it's interesting now well, if 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 uh, if if and when breaking news comes across and and ice cube and and dr dre are arrested for the murders of biggie or Tupac, sorry. Um, what's what? What's your what's going through your like? What are you what are you saying? What what happens? What do you do? Well, I um come up with lyrics to a new song. <laughs> they got well, I um I go on play, vacation. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I you know uh, with the current state of hip hop, man, I'm just turned off by the music industry. Period. Uh, it's just a turn off all of it. Homicide. But if they announce that uh, they arrest Dr. Dre and Ice Cube for the murders of Tupac Shakur and Christopher Wallace, then uh, I guess I'll start making new videos and we'll start talking <laughs> about where they're going to be tried at, yeah. you know, whether they're going to get the death penalty or not. And, you know, I guess we'll be having another conversation. Yeah, we're going to a deeper conversation because I've already started one on my on my YouTube channel because. I done told so many people that it's solved. I'm, I'm not even going to tell you it's solved no more. Where are they going to be arrested at? And I'm thinking it, when they get arrested, it's going to be in Los Angeles first. Since you, so you do think before they pass away, they will be arrested? In, the, in, in our lifetime, they'll be arrested, indicted, put in jail. Yeah, uh, Detective 2, they already put me in for the, uh, the reward. They said as they get closer, you know, they'll let me know. So they're pursuing them. You know, it's been 25 years, uh, 26 years exactly, and the guys are extremely rich. So you just don't go. You got out of the air seal tight yeah. case. See me? You could take me and throw me yeah. in jail. And yeah, say, we're okay, all done for. Yeah, you yeah. Know, oh, okay, get out. You yeah. know, I, and I'm innocent, but you yeah. throw me in there. Like when the guy tried to kill me. Ivan, all we need is the guy, the person yeah. next door to go say one of us did it. We're done. Well, look, we're doing life. I tell you what, they, they had me in custody. <laughs> And I was fighting the case. Everybody was in there was laughing because I was in custody fighting the case because the detective said I shot the man because he couldn't rap. <laughs> and I'm, in, I'm sitting in custody. I'm in custody for two years fighting the case because the detective said I shot the man because he couldn't rap. I don't see you, sh even, even in your heyday, 
I, I don't see you shooting somebody over them not being able to ride. Maybe <laughs> kicking them out, you know, maybe telling them to go home and, you know, get a bike or get a new job. Well, you know, they but, never mentioned that at my trial. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't. <laughs> they never mentioned it. But I sat in, but because I don't have any money. Yeah. I had to sit in jail for two years mm -hmm. and prove it. I know. And then the jury came back not guilty. So what they would do to me, they can't do that. No, to because Dr. you got to think. You, you probably got a billion with Dre, and then you probably got a hundred million maybe with 160, Cube. 160. 160 with Cube? Yeah, 160 million with Cube. So you're talking, you, you're going to indict two guys worth – 1.3 billion yeah you better have that case you, solid even if he has it solid it needs to be more solid yeah because they're gonna they're coming with attorneys like attorney attorney attorneys like, that are that are 10 million an hour you won't you won't even have enough room <laughs> you on the to defense table yeah. johnny cochran will come out of retirement out of retirement they're gonna or, dig I mean, him up out of the uh, grave, right. yeah. the grave yeah. Cock, well he'll be there for this one they're gonna dig him up johnny's okay. i'm here yeah. like everybody be like where johnny come from like i'm here elon elon remember that chip you got we need to get johnny up <laughs> yeah. hit him with that neural link yeah i'm here yeah shoot <laughs> I, I heard y'all got a big one going on but that that their defense team would look like a uh, a football squad. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be of all and each one of those people on the football team are all ten million a piece yeah. per hour per hour, and they're going to do their job. So and th they're richer than the prosecution. <laughs> they're, they're richer than the state. That's yes, <laughs> yes. So that's a problem. <laughs> the state going. What are you? <laughs> get some more. <laughs> get yeah. more evidence. Yeah. <laughs> get yeah. more. Dupree, I know you got a lot, but these guys can buy the state. Yeah, because <laughs> they don't want. Uh, I'm pretty sure they don't want to lose. They want to get them, and they don't want a Robert Blake situation. Well, I'll tell you this much. <clears throat> Being that uh, Dupree had gotten that guy, I keep messing up his name. Grim, grim sleeper. That that guy was no joke to get. No. So that that takes dedication. That takes patience. So if, if I'm Dre and I'm Ice Cube, I got my billions, but that is not a guy I want after me. No, you don't want you don't want Detective Dupree no. after. If he got the Grim Reaper, hell no. No, no. Grim Reaper's eventually... a lot harder than this. Well, that's what Drake had. The uh, I mean, uh, Dre had the aneurysm. He had, it blew his mind <laughs> when, you know, his wife left him right after the detective went to his house. She packed her bags and said, I'm out. You you did what? You what? I, I'm out of here. So she left because she knows he's a killer. And uh, she stayed there all the way up until Detective Dupree went to his house to talk to him. After Detective Dupree interviewed him, she left. You know, and it's sad that they did this to their lives. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It, it's, it, it, I, uh, R. Kelly had $27,000 in his uh, commissary. <laughs> they took it. <laughs> <laughs> they took it. They and took they rocked him. Yeah, they took his soup money. <laughs> <laughs> how much time did he get? He got all he's well. Long, long, long time ago. He's done. He's done for. Forever. He's done. He did. He's done. So you, you you know you 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 throw your life away, you know you're trying to be slick, trying to be hard, you know, trying to be a gangster, you know, and gangsters don't have nothing to do with killing people. You know what gangster is? Gangster is about making money. Yeah. Gangsters went to Vegas and made money. They weren't killing people. No, they didn't go to Vegas to they kill. They were building people. casinos so that idiots can go into the casino that is fancy the best rooms on the planet and for some reason people think you're going to go in there and beat them you're not you're <laughs> they, they're I about mean, making money right and they're owned by you know who gangsters <laughs> gangsters and nobody's getting killed you, you've got the dummies walking in who are addicted to gambling for some reason they think that they're going to win yeah. when the place is like absolutely beautiful how yeah. do you think it's beautiful yeah. and <laughs> you, in order to in order for a gangster to kill you you have to be really doing something break loyalty you have to be a threat you, know, a threat. you have to be yeah. uh some you have to steal something owe them some money or disrespectful disrespectful you know but just you can sing better than me i'm gonna blow your brains come on no. man. It's, it's no. not that's not gangster man
Last two questions for you. Okay. Uh, one, and then it, whatever Rob might have. Uh, one, this is off this, but just out of your opinion, because I've always wanted this. Why do you think uh, cash money, baby, whatever, why do you think he held Wayne's record for all that time? I don't know. <clears throat> I, I just wonder if you had an opinion on no, that. No, I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't get into uh, what everybody's doing, you know. Uh, I'm a fan of the guys, you know, uh, Master P, you know, all the guys. Uh, they got great movies. They had uh, wonderful careers. I'm a fan of all these guys. Uh, but uh, my own, I'm a West Coast guy. I'm a, I'm an original rapper from the West. I should be there. Uh, but I'm not there because of, you know, Cube and Dre. So that's, that's my focus is just making sure, hey, did I, I'm not really, I, j I just want my credit for what I did. You know, I don't want to go through life telling, I, you know, I have one, I used to tell women, hey, Dr. Dre, you know, is, stole my music. <laughs> <laughs> and one day you want to be like, Hey, you remember? Remember you laughed at me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, now I'm the, I, I want everybody to know that I'm the beat maker. You got a little bit of a bucket list so that you can hit them all up and say, "Remember <laughs> when you laughed at me?" Yeah, I, I got your number from '86, '87, '89. Yeah, I did one. Yeah, remember <laughs> when you, you you thought I was crazy? They, <laughs> they thought everybody thought I was crazy. Doctor Dre imitation you. Yeah, right. So you know, but I just at sixty, I'm sixty now. You don't look 60 at all. Thank you. Damn, he's got those genetics. How old would you say he looks? I was going to say like 49, 50. Yeah, I'd say late 40s. That's said no drugs, no alcohol. I don't drink. Not alcohol. Age the hell out of you. Yeah, alcohol will do it. I don't drink and uh, I don't use uh, drugs. Good for you. And so that's Especially coming up the way, the environment that you were in. Yeah. Shoo, you, ex I, you escaped the board, buddy. Oh, I barely made it. I barely made it. There's uh, many of my uh, friends fell by the wayside. Uh, most of my friends, uh, I'm a, like I told you, I'm a seventh grade dropout. So most of my friends are are in prison for life. They not getting out. The guys that I ran with as a kid, um, they're not coming home. Uh, are either they're dead. I don't have any many friends from childhood that's uh, out on the streets. The the ones that I ran with. They oh. they gone they gone I, I I ran with the uh, the tough ones, my uh, double G, they call him double G. Double G invented home invasion robberies. <laughs> that, was, that was my childhood friend. <laughs> yeah. well, I guess you could put that in the portfolio. I mean, you should have got a patent on that one. <laughs> no, so he, that's what he invented it, but really he invented. A double G invented home invasion robberies. That was my, uh, this, those are the guys that I cut my teeth with in uh, junior high and high school and all of that stuff. So, but those guys, he's not coming home now. They gave him uh, 300 and something years. <sighs> yeah. Wow. They caught him out there in Beverly Hills scouting a place and they put, locked him up and 300 and something years. He'll never see daylight ever again. And so I, I'm just fortunate that uh, I survived. And I say to the young youngsters, stay clean. You know, stay clean. You know, because it's easy to pick up a gun and kill somebody, guys. But getting away with it for the rest of your life is not easy. And once they get you, they got you. And if you do, and you could get the death penalty, so it's not worth it. A lot of these guys have led these youngsters astray. They got them thinking that it's okay to kill. Well, you know, <clears throat> you listen to the gangster rap, you're young, you know, you don't have anything, you're in the hood. Yeah. Who do you look up to? Yeah. Are you going to look up to, uh, you know, Wills before he did his asshole shit, or Will Smith, whoever, you're in the ghetto. Yeah. You're not going to look up to Will Smith or Chris Rock. You're going to look up to somebody you can relate to. Yeah. When they're talking about killing everybody, yeah. if Bro. you're looking up to Kobe Bryant, you're going to go shoot basketball. Right. If you're looking up to a killer... You're probably going to end up going Killing and killing somebody, right? Yeah, because yeah, it's the influence. But you're a great example. And anybody watching this that dropped out of school or might be having a tough time, look at you. You dropped out of seventh grade. You talk proper. You're respectful. You come in dressed like a man, you know? 
uh, you can have a conversation, you can have a debate. And this is somebody who <laughs> you were, went through hell, were in the worst situation possible, went through the peak of the crack epidemic, and look at you. You made it. Yeah. Yeah, and I uh, just recently, when when um, when I was doing my time, I was over in the Alvarado area. I went homeless over there, and uh, uh, hard time. I, I started with two radios, went to three, four, and now that area, uh, they have a little small swap meet on the uh, train platform over there because okay. everybody followed me over there. They yeah. saw me coming out of homelessness, and they was like, hey, a light bulb came on. I can do it too. And so that's what uh, it's all about, influence other people to be great. And you never gave up. No. You never gave up. No, I can't give up. Um, I, You know, as long as there's life, there's hope. Uh, I'm very cautious. Uh, uh, I think everybody should be concerned about Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. Um, I wouldn't send them my demo. I wouldn't ask them to help me in the music industry. I wouldn't ask anybody who, who killed somebody to help me. I wouldn't look for the help at all. And, but uh, we, you know, we have to, you know, encourage these young people to be careful. And I'm, I'm concerned. I, I stay concerned, you know, because they tried once. I have a restraint. I have an order to prevent workplace violence against a sitting judge. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. It's prophecy, though. You got that? <laughs> <laughs> it was prophecy. It was prophecy because because I was I was able to uh, you know because I was connected to the Tupac and Biggie case and I was able to put the sheriffs and those two together and and then the Holy Ghost worked and because it takes a miracle to get an order on a judge. You ain't lying. <laughs> you ain't lying. I got an oh. order. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? I got an order on him. So, you know, he got all up in my business. and I'm sure he did. So, I, you know, he's friends with Dre and I sued the city for the false imprisonment because I was in there. He Two years. Somebody, shot somebody because you couldn't rap. So I sued the city for that. And he being friends with Dre and the radio station and all of that, and he handled the case when he should have recused. And so he didn't know that I was, I'm a, I studied. And so I got the research and hey, hey you know these, hey, you're you dirty. <laughs> You misread Ivan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he ain't dumb. Nah, I'm the. I, uh, as a preacher, it's my job to study. Congratulations on, on everything, man. Thank you, man. Who who's the goat quarterback? Even if you don't like football, who do you think's the best quarterback ever? The best quarterback ever. Shoot, he's gonna go with you. He's I from think the West. So. I think so. Shut up, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to say. Um, Who's that for the Patriots? Uh, Brady? My uh, man. My man. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Brady. Thank you. I have to say Brady. Yeah, he's he, for me. I yeah. think Brady, he, he done. You he, changed your mind yet, Rob? No. Who's the best? No. Joe Montana. Jo oh, well, you know what? No, 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 no. Ivan, you were just with uh, me. No, you can't. You can't. Well, he, he's going old school. <laughs> he, and and, uh, and uh, I just saw Joe Montana on, uh, he's got a commercial. So. When you go old school, you I guess you would say Joe Montana. Oh. If you go new school, though, you got to go with Tom no, Brady. No, we're saying overall. Oh, you got Tom Brady. Because I think who has the most championship? Who has the most Super Bowl rings? Tom Brady. Yeah, still playing. In front. I mean, he's yeah. going to hit a little bit this year, but. Yeah, you know. and uh, he still he still came out of retirement and won. Won with a new team. And bought his buddy out of retirement. <laughs> yeah, hey, let's and then go. he got divorced. Yeah. <laughs> he's still playing. We had the first year that they won the New England Patriots was uh, nine one one. Yeah, that was the first year they won. That was huge. Uh, I thought it was rigged. Still won. Did you? Yeah. yeah, I thought it was rigged. I said, how how convenient. It, you know, the Yankees were in the World Series that year and they they lost though. They lost the Diamondbacks, but yeah. Yeah, and then the Patriots come up and they win in nine one one. I said, how convenient is this? You know, we, we, we need a patriotic thing, and they yeah. come up the Patriots. So yeah. I, I thought it was all staged. But then they went on to yeah. win and win and mm -hmm. win and win. So they proved that it, it wasn't it wasn't uh, staged. Yeah. Yeah.
pull up uh, Ivan's stuff and we'll go through everything so everybody can see it okay. and we'll have it all in the description for you. Okay. Thank you, man. For I, I, I really appreciate you uh, bringing me out to another story. <clears throat> oh, absolutely. So we'll start with his Twitter. If you want to go to Ivan's Twitter, Ivan, you want to tell everybody? Yeah, this is uh, Ivan the Great Law, uh, Monster Beats. Uh, I'm there. You guys can get at me there. If you got a little music you want me to help me with, I got my own record label. I'll do whatever I can to help you. Uh, but that's my Twitter. I, you can follow me there. Yeah, hit follow on, on that, Rob. Okay. And then this is the uh, blog that started it all. Uh, this investigation into Dr. Dre started with a question. Is Dr. Dre the luckiest man alive or a killer? That question was answered by law enforcement, and uh, they believe that he is a killer. And uh, this is the book. You can uh, pre-order the book uh, and so that you'll get the final cut. The final cut will be on here as soon as I get it done. And the auto is available now on Amazon. You just it, type in the same thing. Yeah, right? you can type in the same thing. Go to Amazon and you can read it now, just the basic uh I just got something there so I can have a copyright on this stuff. This is too huge not to, for me to protect myself that I solved this case. I'll have Amazon in the description, too, in case people want to read a sample of about what's to come out. Okay. <clears throat> and then this here is being shopped. Yeah, this is the movie. I'm shopping it. Uh, Hollywood, uh, Tupac, and Biggie Homicide Soft. To me, Hollywood is a hood. It's not Hollywood anymore. It's Hollywood hood. now. And so you better be careful trying to do anything in anybody's hood. And, uh, then, and then a ton of killer clips on here. Yeah, this Especially is Especially that one right there. Anybody watching this, watch that one with show Confessing, Murdering, e Easy. Yeah, this is my Poof. YouTube channel yep. uh, where I uh, put together my own uh, investigation into everything. That's my home studio right there. Very cool. Yeah, that's my recording studio in my bedroom. And so I kind of just... Uh, just do my little thing there, whatever I could do to uh, let everybody know that I'm real and uh, I'm here, you know, and that I'm a part of the, uh, I'm supposed to be a part of the hip hop scene. It doesn't make sense for these guys to try to uh, pretend like they're the only ones. And it's, you know. And then, uh, Rob, if you go to a Hollywood Visual up there, we'll have a link uh, in the description for everybody. So that if they want to read through it, they can read through it. That right there. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I, I don't <coughs> actually have that. Uh, uh, I turned it into a link. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Good, <laughs> great. I got you. Okay, okay, cool. You got me. And then that way you can, uh, you know, read through everything that Ivan's done. And I'll yeah. tell you what, Ivan, Ivan's blowing my mind. That was pretty good. I, like I mean, I never looked at it the way Ivan looked at it or researched the, the it. Pic, the very pic, interesting. The pictures, the pictures of the bullet holes. The bullet holes got me. Very interesting. Yeah, you, you, you'd have to be an expert marksman to uh, hit somebody through that car door. You know, anybody can hit somebody, but to go through that car door and know what you're aiming at and where the location. So those were expert marksmen. But when I first started investigating the case, it said that uh, law enforcement killed Tupac and Biggie. And so my question was, okay, if they did it, why? I do remember hearing that early on because remember first it was about how corrupt they were. Yeah. It was corrupt, corrupt, corrupt. <clears throat> right. Then it was they were involved in it. Then right. real quick it went to Orlando Anderson. Right. After that's after that's while I was in custody. Oh yeah? Yeah. Well see, that's that's what I told the Lieutenant Thompson. They said, We don't investigate this case no more. I said, Why not? Because you got an ice cube script. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a script. So, you know, it that came up while I was, after I wrote the, is Dr. Dre the luckiest man alive or a killer? Then it, it became needful to close the case. But when nobody suspected them, it didn't matter. But when they knew that at least one person knows we need to close this case, because if you don't close it, then you can be held accountable for it. So they was trying to close it. When I got out of custody, there was everybody in the news media was, let's close this case. Let's close this case. But the Holy Ghost, God said, no, you're not closing this case without the right suspects. And to be honest with you, we don't want people who kill people to get away with murder. 
We we need we need accountability. I think we can all agree with that, right? Yeah, we need accountability. We don't we don't want a, a lawless society. Um, when doing all of the uh, things like George Floyd, it was very disturbing to me because every thing that I saw, even George Floyd, was non-compliance. It was all non-compliance. George Floyd didn't comply with the police. Uh, the, the the one guy who was killed sleeping in a, he was sleeping in his car and they woke him up. He didn't comply. He started fighting the police, took their taser. And so I saw, and everybody hollering Black Lives Matter, but nobody said comply with the police. And you have to comply with the police. Comply, go to jail, and come home. Simple as that. Simple as that. You know, that's what I did. They was, they had me in there for shooting a man because he couldn't rap. I was. <laughs> well, that is pretty funny. <laughs> but I, <laughs> you know, and Scooby, Scooby, he's from Sixty Hood over there where uh, Nipsey was from. And Nipsey used to brick, uh, send Scooby uh, all kind of packages. And Scooby said they had a, because they, they, they really thought I did that. So they had everybody together one day inside of the cell and they had a rap contest. And everybody just rapping away. And they just rapping, and then the and then after it's all over, the uh, one of the one of the deputies come on the mic and say, "Who won?" They listening. They thought really I was gonna flip out. <laughs> <laughs> and Scooby said, "Scooby said you didn't shoot him. You gave him a pass." <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty sure. <laughs> so everybody was clowning me because I'm sitting in custody yeah. for shooting somebody. And you know what they said? They said, they said, hey, man, he worse than Suge Knight. <laughs> 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 they killed you, boy. Yeah, they said I was worse than Suge Knight. And one of the guys was rapping, you know, his rapper, because I'm in there. I said, yeah, man, I produced, man, let me hear you rap. He said, no, you might shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything, Rob? Yeah, I would just say when, when you come back again, you know, if it comes back on again, um, you know, we'll just chill to the next episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to the next uh, episode. Yeah, oh. we'll just chill. I, I to had to throw something in there. I had to do the next good. episode. Hey. All right, wow, man. Awesome thank stuff. you for your time. Really good stuff. Yeah, really awesome. good stuff. I'd love you. to have you back again. Yeah, and really had a good time. And I want to say, if you if you hear this, Snoop, man, I love you, man. I met you. Steve gave us a chance to meet Steve Harvey. I love you. I'm glad your nose is clean. Keep up the good work, man. You know, I'm proud of you. And I'm not a hater. Uh, I admire your work from a distance, my brother. God bless you, and uh, God keep you. Thank you, Robin. Good stuff. All right. All right, uh, look right into the uh, – move that mic, Tommy. Take that. Yep, you can take your headphones Shoot off, and Alvin, you're gonna look right into that. I've been right into that camera over Tommy's shoulder, just to, for the thumbnail for, uh, for for social media. Yeah, here you go. You can smile if you want. Don't matter. Five, four, three, two, one.